Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast. Bodice 100, happy long weekend, happy Australia Day. I don't want to get too political, but whatever your views are, I think we can all agree that a public holiday long weekend is a good idea. A chance to catch up with family and friends and to get to the beach and get a few waves if you can. This is our first episode of the podcast for 2020. And to commence our first year, we're having a look back at some of the best bits from last year with the Bodist 100. My name's Tim and joining me as always is my co-host, Oe. Oe, welcome back and happy Bodist 100 day. You read that off a piece of paper and it was still terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm throwing it away. <laughs> Catch you later, Rundown. <laughs> We're going rogue like we always We're do. We're going live. Um, well, yeah, this is it. This is the Bodice 100. We're counting down the best parts from the podcast, from the Body Surf podcast from last year. Mm, yeah. It was very hard to find 100. Yeah, well, I thought you weren't going to. I've done it. You've done it. Really? <laughs> I'm excited. If there's 100 bits that are good in our podcast, you know what? Maybe we should do some more. No one said they had to be good. No. Well, yeah. They're just the bodice. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no one's voted for these tracks. Oh, no. These are voted by the listener. <laughs> Who? I got a lot of feedback. Oh, yeah. I was out at the surf uh, the other day and a bloke goes, oh, I like that bit when you talk to that guy. And I go, yeah, it's in there. It's in there. <laughs> That's it. I whacked it in. Yeah, we got a hundred to get through, so <laughs> it probably is going to be in there. Should we start things off with number 100? Oh, please, Tim. I've been waiting all year for this. All righty. Here we go. The first clip of many. Number 100 in the Bodist 100. Firstly, it's called War. <laughs> Just War? War Hand Plants. Nice. So we do get a few people asking how to pronounce it. So it's W-A-W Hand Plants. Good. Yeah, and well, Timmy was saying that before. He was like, how do I pronounce yeah. it? Because yeah. I didn't want to look like an idiot on our first podcast. Yeah, exactly right. I like it. But yeah, let's clear that up to start with. It's War. Uh, it seems like if you're of English descent, it's a pretty given. It's all, it's war, as in saw and raw. But if you're American or from certain parts of Australia, it's wah. Yeah, wah. Like, <laughs> That's a, yeah. I I, like I think wah. I said wah when yeah. I was first on the website. Now, like, Ricky, what does wah mean, or what does wah stand for? Well, war stands for uh, wave after wave. Well, Tim, we did about thirty episodes of the podcast this year, and I still feel like an idiot. <laughs> So, <laughs> especially after that. But wasn't that nice to reflect on our first interview? That was episode one. Yeah. That was the first episode of the Body Surf podcast. That was Ricky Gilby what explaining the acronym WAR. WAR. WAR hand plants. And what a year it was for WAR. Oh, yes. And it's funny, on the podcast, a few weeks before Ricky launched his new hand plane, you kind of... You kind of guessed what he was going to release. Mm. It was quite profound. Yeah. I'm a prophet. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't think so. Notre Dame. Yeah, that's me. That's what they call you down at the uh, at the old Rissol. The Rissol. <laughs> at the RSL, that's my name at the RSL <laughs> every Saturday. They go, oh, he's, yeah. he's Nostradamus, he he's can, in again. He can pick a winner. He can. He sure can. All right, well, we've got 99 problems, but a clip ain't one. <laughs> this is number 99. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, I'm happy you're here anyway, mate. It's good to have a third person on the podcast today. Hopefully, it'll uh, spark up the uh, the energy a little bit because we're pretty. We can get quite boring, can't we, Tim? Sure. You don't just want to hear the same voice no, every no every episode. <laughs> you can really tell the difference in quality, can't you? Yeah. So that was uh, from episode four. Yeah. That was when we were introducing Uga for the first uh, time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you were sort of saying, it's great to have Uga here because we suck. Yeah. Well, it's good to have a third wheel. I'm, I stand by that oh, statement. Yes. And we've been looking for our third heat for a long time. Yeah, well, who are we gonna, who are we gonna, trying to get? I think Casey Donovan is our third heat. Well, we had Schaefer. <laughs> Not Sh Paul Schaefer. Schaefer? Schaefer? <laughs> Not Schaefer. Schaefer. We had Schaefer. We had Shaky. Yeah, Shaker. We're shaking things up, weren't we? Tim, Owen, and Shaker. Unfortunately, Shaker doesn't body surf, so she can't be involved in this mm. podcast. But, you know, we're, we're looking for a third co-host. Casey Donovan, you reckon? I think Casey's our go. Okay. Let's get in touch with her. Um, you got a bumble, yeah? Oh, yeah, I matched a couple of times with Casey. <laughs> and I don't think it was like a like a random account. I think it was her actual account. Oh, it's 100% her. Yeah. I actually spoke to her once and uh, on, on Bumble. Mm. Um, if you don't know, Owie and I are massive degenerates, so we <laughs> we punt, we drink, and we swipe. 
No, I don't. <laughs> not, I don't any, do not anymore. Not anymore. We're spoken for. But back in the day, that, that's what we used to do. Yeah. And yeah, I had matched with Casey and she was testing out all her material that she was going to use the next day on Triple M. Oh, yeah. So she was t- telling me all these little jokes about what she was up to mm. and stuff. And then I heard the next day on the radio her repeating these jokes to Maddie Johns. Were they any good? Yeah, well, yeah. They got a laugh. Well, I reckon we could get her. Yeah. We're pretty big names in the uh, podcast industry now, Tim. So, we Casey, just, yeah. Casey Donovan, if you are listening, which I'm sure she is, she's a big fan. <laughs> of the Body Surf podcast. Of just us in general. She matched with us. Well, that's true. So, uh, give us a call. Mm. 97? 98. Uh, no, no, 98. This is 98. This is a real quick one, so I'll leave your mic on for this. Okay. okay. Number 98 in the Bodist 100. Hello. <laughs> 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 so that's our first hello in the countdown. <laughs> the first of many. Hopefully. The first of many. So that was a hello from Between the Sets, episode thirteen. Okay. Did you? You could tell. Yeah, yeah. Episode thirteen was one of one of my favourite episodes. <laughs> it was. I, I believe it was a Between the Sets. Yes, that's yeah. That's mm. right. <laughs> I told you. See, mate, I know my potties. All right, let's get to ninety-seven. Now, this is actually a bit of an explanation of the origin of hello how you doing are good mate a little bit late this week i wonder why oh we're all good man i was actually i know you want to stitch me up and make a joke out of this but i was actually going to say something about the intro of the show how i say hello someone asked like what is he saying a a loop (laughs) a loop but no what we're saying is hello but just with a silly voice because i don't know why we do it (laughs) no there's uh (laughs) Definitely no reason yeah. why we do it we're at just, all. We're just being silly. There wasn't just anyone asking that question, Tim. Who asked? Alan Smart. Oh, hey, really? Yeah, he was the person who asked about the loops. What? I'm just flattered that he listens, let alone is inquisitive about the origins of Haloop. Well, that's right. We haven't told this story on the podcast I yet. I think we've mentioned small parts of this, but I don't know how much we're allowed to talk yeah. about. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure he wouldn't kind of want to be mm. named and shamed. Not that he would be shamed, but... Alan uh, is an animator, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll let you people who are listening go and do the Googling. Oh, it's um, worth a Google. It's worth a Google. I was actually at the pub the other day, and a mate who is a massive fan of some of his work was starstruck that mm. this guy would listen to our shitty podcast. Yeah. yeah. One day, hopefully, in the future, mm. we may be able to go over and, and meet the man. Yeah, so Alan does live in California. And uh, we've spoken Don't about... Don't give his address. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in California. Yeah. So so we're keen to get over there one day. It's one of our biggest dreams, actually, is to go over and surf uh, the East Coast of America. So one day we might get to meet Alan. That would be uh, incredible. Mm. Because if you have a look on his IMDb page, his resume is so impressive, it's not funny. Well, it's not as good as yours, Tim. <laughs> if you want to have a check out of my IMDb page, just, you know... Google me. Uh, it comes up pretty pretty quickly. One, one credit to my name. And what is that? Uh, it was a, an OB broadcast for a test match, I believe, or maybe a one-day international against Australia and Sri Lanka. And you were doing the, the Hawkeye. Hawkeye, or Eagle Eye, as it's now known. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty good from but you, But also, too. in my, I love IMDb, by the way. I spend big m- fan. most of my day just looking at IMDb mm. trivia. Mm. And I actually have my own trivia. Mm. It says my nickname. Really? It says nickname Ranky. Who put that in there? I don't know. It wasn't one of the, the boys in the OB van, that's for sure. Well, it could have been one of the TAFE boys. It, I actually think it might have been a, a mutual friend of Sean and, and mine. Mm, okay. Because I think she was an IMDb Pro member. Anywho, this is not between the sets. Oh, we, I know it we is. We've got to stop I, I, talking. Could, yeah, we'll speed up and see. But what I will say yes. is just, uh, IMDb yeah. has been on the internet longer than you think. Before Al Gore invented the internet? I think it was made into a website in like 94. Because it's, it's a database before it's a website, yeah? Yeah. But it's just unbelievable how much information is out there. Mm. We should keep, go- keep going with this. <laughs> but it's no, not, no, not this chat, yeah. like the, the countdown. Yeah, okay. Well, what number are we up to? Because I've lost count. I think it's 95, 95. Let's just double check because I would not want to skip ahead. 
Mm. Actually, it's not. We're up to 96. Oh, see, I keep going one earlier. Let me just make sure I've got the right one here. If I move this one over here and <laughs> that one there, we should be good to go. This is number 96. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boys. <laughs> well, that was a really good sound effect. A nice little uh, sound effect there. Cracking open a can of Hairy Man Salt Dog. Speaking of. Do you want a Salt Dog? Oh, I'd love one. One second. Before I grab you a Salt Dog, let's just get straight into number 95. And yeah, we've had the time <laughs> where we got halfway around. He steps on a nail. We have to go back to the hospital. Hopeless. Uh, He's bloody hopeless. Now, that was uh, an episode starring Jesse Mawson, who may make a guest appearance a bit later on. He was actually bagging out his best mate, Robbie. Yeah, Ro- and Robbie's gone MIA. Yes. We think he might have knocked up the missos. <laughs> You've heard it here first. That's a huge scoop. It's a scoop if it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> mate, well, let's just hope that he hasn't done that well, or let's just, stepped on a nail. Let's just hope that head of childcare is good to go. Oh, Bondi. Yeah. That's another uh, sign up for him. Yep. Good. Keep rolling. Let's get into Keep it. Going. This is number 94. Tahiti in April. So, fingers yep. crossed I find some waves then. Mm. Um, I'm going a bit of a romantic trip as well, but there's definitely going to be trips to Chobu and all the other reefs that are around. Now, uh, can we expect a bit more budgie action from you this year? Was oh, it- yeah. I saw that yeah. picture no, of you. Like, the- honestly, yeah. I went out in a full-length wetsuit on <laughs> Sunday and I was cold in an hour. <laughs> Oh, what a good get that was. The pig. Your, probably your your hero, yeah? Your body surfing hero. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say so. You've been following his career for a long time and uh, I remember the first time you saw him, I think it was out at Suck Rock. Yeah, it was. You were so starstruck. Yeah, I was. And I was now really you've stuck. become great mates. You got to interview him. How about that? Yeah, and I saw him the other day, actually. He's trying out um, a couple of pipos. Now, Timmy, we had a conversation about pipos the other day. Mm. And <laughs> you were... You weren't too too keen on them. Well, am my, I throwing you under the bus here? Yeah, I think we need to save this for regular programming. Okay, we're trying to get through a hundred clips. Okay, but we have so many opinions; it's not funny. I oh, know. So let's just keep this rolling, and we'll 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 get you know how many between the sets episodes are we going to do this year? Plenty. It's twenty plenty. <laughs> I thought so it was gonna vision do. this Sunday. No, 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 no. Twenty plenty. Well, um, let's get back into the countdown. This is number 93. Hello. Oh, another hello. <laughs> How'd that get in there? How'd that get in there? Number 93. Hello. And that was from Between the Sets episode 11. 11. Oh, yeah. yeah yep. Yep. Great. Did, ep- did you recognize that one? Nah. See, here's the thing. I thought you might have a good ear for it. Mm. Ricky uh, claims that it's a sound recording that we just rehash every episode. Ah. Oh, like the um, like this, Tim. Wait, get it wait. nice and close. Oh, <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, no, we just drink a lot of beer. So <laughs> Tim says haloop as, as many times as he drinks beer. Yeah, yeah. Every haloop equals one beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, and I'll be checking into the uh, Betty Ford Clinic <laughs> on Monday <laughs> <laughs> after the long weekend, of course. I'm not an idiot. I'm going to enjoy the <laughs> long weekend. <laughs> Cheers to that. Uh, let's keep this countdown going. Um, this can't be right. It is. We're up to 92. Yeah, we're back again already. Back between the sets. Yeah, this is my favourite. <laughs> I like this one. Don't like talking actual body surfing yeah, at all. We just, just like mucking around and being silly buggers. That's right. We but, actually um, got a bit of crap this week, didn't we? Oh, look at this. I've got a rundown. <laughs> yeah, I know. An actual rundown in front of me. Um, sometimes we just have like a scrap bit of paper or like the back of a coaster with a few notes on it. We've actually written a show today, today so it'll probably it. be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how we actually started the countdown. Yeah. I was trying to read a script. Now You're maybe terrible with scripts, Tim. Maybe that's my New Year's resolution. No scripts. No scripts. I have to do everything improv, everything ad lib, and it's just easier. Yeah. I, what I will say about that clip is we're actually going to talk body surfing this year. Well, yes. And you know what? I've been on the promo trail. Mm. I've been out there spruiking the Body Surf podcast and we're actually trying to get um, a few articles written about us and what we're all about and what we've been doing last year, but also what we plan to do this year. Mm. And one of the main things I keep saying is we're going to be way more informative and we're going to be way more professional, especially with our interviews. We want to get some really good guests and we want to 
unlock some amazing stories from these people. Well, that's it. At the end of the day, Tim, we don't know a lot about body surfing. We know a little bit, but not a lot. We need to get the guests in yeah. who have the wealth of knowledge. I'm thinking the hiptos of this world. Mm. We want plenty more hiptos. Yeah. Uh, and the more we can get, the better this podcast is going to become. And I think the only way we can do that is uh, by traveling down south and traveling up north. Mm. Maybe we might have to make a little bit of a pit stop in Melbourne. Oh, maybe we might have to look at going to Hawaii and California, mm. but we'll get there one day. Yeah, one day. We'll do it. All right, should we move on? This is number 91. Hello. All right, another hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was from Between the Sets, episode nine, for those playing along at home. Maybe you're playing the Body Surf podcast bingo. Oh, yeah. Maybe you've got that and you can scratch it off. That's right. You sent you sent the cards out and mailed them, <laughs> you too. Yes. Did you know, it's taken me a long time just to put this countdown together i know i've done no work i'm just here standing and talking rubbish yesterday i had 30 clips to do i had i'd done most of the heavy lifting had 30 clips to do i was up all night and you did them outside work hours didn't you yes of course (laughs) i actually don't take my computer my my, the computer i do all the editing on is a separate computer to what i do work computer on and you saw my rundown i handwrite everything Mm. so um i don't really have to type anything at work oh you don't take this to work no 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 yeah (laughs) Gosh, no. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's keep it going. This is number 90. Guess what? We're number one, baby. We're number one. We're number one. Get the guys from sales in here. Well done. A couple of pagnies for the boys and girls. <laughs> what is a pagny? Uh, champagne. Okay. Bit of, I'm, I'm going to coin it. I'm coining a new phrase. Pagny. It's, it's catching on. Yeah. <laughs> Get a few Arancini balls in here. We deserve it. Let's have a Some treat. Coronitas. Corona buckets. $30 all around. Anyone want one? <laughs> I sure don't want a corona no. <laughs> right now. Topical, are we? Yeah, Explain right. to the people what's going on right well, now. Well, the coronavirus. And I think Jesse Mawson's daughter might have the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> he just told us this before that uh, he went up the doctor. She doesn't have the coronavirus. Thank you very much. But yeah, how's that, Timmy? Last flight came in from China mm. the other night. We're safe, though. It's a particular part of China, isn't it? Yeah. So... um. We should be able to get a good handle on this. Mm. And I say it like we're out there fighting this virus. <laughs> We've got nothing to do with it except for we're amused by its funny name. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder why it's called the coronavirus. Is yeah. there some reason yeah, behind it? because it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need a bit of citrus to disguise how bad it is. Yeah, it costs $30 a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Add lime, it's okay though. Well, that keeps the flies away. Yeah, it does. All righty, let's keep things moving. This is number 89. Hello. Another hello, <laughs> another hello. There's a lot of hello. That was from Between the Sets, episode six. Let's just move right on. This is actually a great clip. This next one is number eighty-eight, and it's a story that Captain Cookman told when he was a guest on the Body Surf podcast. Body surfing would be my yoga or my release. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I, I work in the uh, banking and finance industry. <laughs> great story. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was a different clip. <laughs> I don't know why I found that so amusing. I think yeah, because it had some sexual undertone. Um, but also he finished it by saying, yes, I work in the finance yeah, industry. That's right. So he needs a release. Yeah, that's true. Well, it's funny because I think Captain Kookman is a really, really awesome guy. Absolutely. And it's just strange because I've never met someone who's in the banking and finance industry that is like that. We've all seen Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. That's true. He's nothing like that. No, but he's got, <laughs> mate, he's got a good Winnebago. Yeah, and he's doing all right. He's actually in Hawaii so uh, right now. So if you are listening from ha- Hawaii, aloha, which means hello and goodbye. <laughs> this is number <laughs> This is number 87. Hello-oop. Another hello <laughs> at 87. Hello. Um, that's from Between the Sets, episode 10. Let's get right back into it. This is number 86. Now, how good is just a quick little morning session? <laughs> you love a sesh You're too right Like a like a session or a session? Like a session L- Like what kind of session? A body surf Like not a not a. You're getting wet either way This is number <laughs> 85 Hello Oh 85 another hello A lot of hello in here I do apologise for that But this is what the people voted for Oh, it sounds like you're padding out a lot of this podcast with uh, <laughs> with the loops. I honestly started editing it. I got to about 40 original good quality clips 
And I thought, I'm done. Just mm. chuck the hadoops in. <laughs> oh, great. All right. This is number 84. We should get Google. Is that, that's, a, that's a bit though, isn't it? Hey, Google. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, it's not, it's not hooked up. No. Yeah, it wasn't hooked up. Well, obviously that uh, was before we got the roadcaster. Exactly. Terrible audio. <laughs> um, we should mention again that we have some really great equipment that's going to change the quality of the show, but also where we take the show. We can take this bad boy on the road. So Not until uh, <laughs> after February 25. Yeah, part of the deal, I bought this uh, in a Black Friday sale, got it for a steal by the way thank mm. you very much uh store dj okay. that's who i bought it through and i am quite loyal to them i bought a lot of our gear through store dj mm. and um i'm like that with harvey norman yeah you love your gopro stuff from harvey norman you yeah. went there the other day and you got stitched up though yeah yeah they didn't have a um back mounted float mm. adhesive mount don't have it <laughs> they, uh, despite it being advertised on the website mm. yeah see i don't like ordering things online i want things straight away so well, i always go in and they never have it here's the thing i could have got it cheaper online mm. delivered but i wanted it that day so That's i held right. off and then i go in the store and they don't have it you waste your time you waste your money i wasted you know. two days yeah anywho um yeah now we can take the show on the road which is great but also just uh, a bit of a, a call back to that last clip which was number 84 which was uh titled hello google <laughs> actually hey google what's the weather going to be like tomorrow oh bring the brolly thanks google okay so yeah it's going to be cold tomorrow how much did that set you back I got it for free. What? Yeah. That, From you know, who? Does someone recognize me? You know, they're like, hey, don't you do that podcast? I was like, yeah. yeah. You need Google. I'll, I'll grab one of those Googles. No, but we should mention, uh, we do steal a lot of our material from Kate, Tim and Marty on mm. Nova. And uh, uh, I don't know. Do you feel bad about that? No. Because a lot of people go, why do you say good gear? <laughs> Are you talking about drugs? Are you talking about material? Are you talking about body surfing gear and i go no no, no we're just plagiarizing yeah, yeah. <laughs> straight up and down plagiarism all that's right that's all it is i apologize for this number 83 is another hello and welcome <laughs> to the body surf podcast with your budgie boys tim and Owie. so that was another oh that was a double that was a can crank like a can crack a can crack loop yeah but you said that one didn't sound as good as your one well Mate, you listen back to this recording. I will. And then you'll hear how good my one was. All right, let's get back into it. Number 82. Apparently Corey's bringing some bloke to, to Womp Camp. Like just a, a, just a random, full random. Like a gum tree ad. I don't know. Like I think it went out on someone's Insta. Like, uh, can you give this kid a lift? Or, That's nice. So, yeah, but I asked Corey, I'm like, where's, where's he sleeping? He goes, well, not with me. I wouldn't want to be sleeping with Corey. But people do before. that a lot here in Australia for festivals. Like people who don't drive or just want, they just go on like um, the internet and go, hey, anyone got a, can give us a lift to Byron or whatever. Like, it's I called ride share. Yeah, I find it really weird though. And like they just put 20 bucks in for Petty and then sleep in the back the whole time. Yeah. And then so, yeah, sometimes they don't get murdered. Yes. <laughs> what a rip. <laughs> I know. If I'm paying $20, I at least want a bit of fondling or something. <laughs> Speak about sessions. <laughs> His name was uh, Jaron Bridges, by the way. The, uh, did he have a good time there? I think he did. Will he be coming back this year? Well, not according to Corey, not in his car. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I think there's no tension between anyone. Mm. You know, like Womp Camp just brings everyone together. And how good was that weekend? Yeah, absolutely. That was the first time we attended. And I think we'll be going back for years to come. Jesse, you coming this year? Okay, good. Jesse will be there. All righty. Well, this is number 81. So we're all heading up to Seals Rock in a week's time. Um, and body surfers from around Australia are going to join us there um, for a big weekend of drinking and swimming. <laughs> More great, drinking than Great swimming. combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll go well. If that's drinking that, and that's swimming. That's like our prime like target area yeah that's where right in the medium of that if there was a, our sweet spot yeah, a venn there, diagram if there was like a <laughs> <laughs> swimming yeah. <laughs> drinking drowning in that's the middle right. did you have a cold that week Tim? oh sounding silky smooth wasn't i <laughs> oh, mate, you, sound, you sound half hung over i mean we are speaking about drinking and swimming but tim right. gee gee now, whiz you, you shouldn't you shouldn't drink and swim 
It's, yeah, I've done it once. It's a bad combo. It's a good sensation, mm. but it's very dangerous. It's like going to the gym drunk. Have you ever done that? Yeah. It's really fun. It, you liked it. Uh, it's really, really fun. I didn't like that. <laughs> no, I like swimming drunk, but don't do it. No. And, I'm not. and if you are going to do it, go in between the flags. Yeah. Please go in between the flags. Mm. All right, number 80. But for me... Oh, <laughs> you turned me off already, Tim. We've only just started. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing over here. We're in big trouble. <laughs> now, disclaimer, uh, that leads into this perfectly. We're terrible. Yeah. We're... <laughs> Absolutely shit house. We're pretty average body surfers <laughs> and we're even worse podcasters. Yeah. <laughs> now, we've made plenty of mis- mistakes. Yeah. There's another one right there. <laughs> And we haven't changed. That just sums us up perfectly. Yeah, that should be number one, actually. <laughs> I've, I actually voted for that clip as number yeah. one. I actually voted for Tones and I. <laughs> no, you didn't. Did we, she was on the podcast. I yeah. can't believe people actually voted for her. She's horrible. It's not even about that. It's like, is she even that sort of demographic? No. Nah. Yeah. Mm. You know, she had a go. Remember she was at the uh, AFL grand final? Mm. One of Frankston's finest. Frankston? She's from Frankston. That's yeah. that's actually pretty ghetto. Yeah, like yeah. that's like she probably gets some street cred for that. Mm. Good honor. And let's see how she goes in the hottest one hundred. But right now this is the bodest one hundred. <laughs> Way more important. Heaps more. And um What's gonna be number one, Tim? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I actually don't, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but this is number 79. I will die. And I, I think I have died once under a double wave holdout. Yeah. I, I think I'm the ghost of Belly Slater like here talking to <laughs> in the podcast today. So, yeah, yeah. Big big waves terrify me. What's if, the if biggest you, wave you've gone? Like, you know, probably six foot. I mean, five foot, four foot. It's getting low. <laughs> <laughs> that was our exclusive interview with the one and only Belly Slater. One of the best. How good was that interview? I, I we, There's a few clips coming up from that interview. But I love that story because, you know, I'm a small wave specialist. And to hear a guy like that who has so much credibility in the uh, body surfing community to admit, you know, he doesn't like going big waves. And he's your hero, isn't he? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only when it comes to body surfing. But when it comes to Connie T, yeah, he's very, very funny. Um, and he often will send through little messages and go, what do you think of this? Yeah. And then a minute later, he's posted it yeah, and got yeah. like a thousand likes on this yeah. great bit of material. He's going to do big things. Big, big things. That was number 79, the first of many Belly Slater clips. Oh, good. Um, let's get Because it's been pretty in. weak up until now, Tim, <laughs> and I hope it gets a lot better. Well, I can see a little bit ahead of me and it looks like there's a bit of a break from Halopes. Oh, good. So let's get back into some real content. This is number 78. Well, I think we've always, like, when Owen and I started the podcast, we actually wrote a bit of a list of who we would like to get on the show. You were on that list, Jesse. Oh, thank you. And we finally got you. Great get, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> How did we get you? You, you asked me the yeah, other we, day. <laughs> sent you a text. <laughs> what, are you doing, what are you doing tonight? Yeah, yeah, come over. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happened. Well, and it's happened a few more times. Jesse has been a guest on the Body Surf podcast uh, a few times over last year and, and potentially he might be dropping in tonight. Should we get him now? Yeah, well, no, because I don't have his mic set up yet. Okay. And I really need to uh, get through these last few Oh, clips. we need to speed this up big time. Yeah, we, we've got to, we're, we're clocking up to news. We're so. in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> let's get this going again. Um, let's just power through a few. This is number 77. I'm a small wave specialist. Yeah, is right. The, yeah, is what I am. I, I don't see, I don't understand why people go out in big waves. I don't <laughs> see the fun in, in getting smashed on the head. I, I don't like drowning. <laughs> I, I don't enjoy suffocating. Um, and also, I don't care what people say about me. Nothing is going to be worth dying. And I will die if I go out and surf. That's, that's too big. I'm actually a big fan of suffocation. <laughs> Huge fan. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. And that's oh. why I go out in the big surf, Tim. Oh, my goodness. And as you say, either way, you're going to get wet. That's a real weird fetish, man. <laughs> this is number 76. We're, we're drinkers. We're drinkers. Yeah. It, and it's funny because we advertise ourselves as the budgie boys. Like, you've got to get your kid off. Yet, we're probably the most out of shape blokes <laughs> well, going I, around. I will say, since Robbie joined the team... <laughs> He has trimmed down quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, no, he's been going to the gym. Mm. Yeah, he's got a gym in his he's apartment. He's doing the hot yoga, he told me. 
the yeah. hot yoga. <laughs> yeah, like so different you, to regular yoga. Yeah, it's, you get real hot and then you sweat sweat out all the all the bad juju. Ah, oh, oh, good, good gear, gear. Good yeah, gear. very good, good gear. gear. Oh, by the way, Jesse's here. Hey, I'm here. Jesse Mawson, the co-captain of the Budgie Boys. What's up, boys? Good to be here for the Bodice 100. He's the only person that said yes to coming. I know. They I all bailed. I was, the deal? I was keen to get everyone in to do like a shift. Yeah. And uh, they're all busy. Well, we were going to do the Brabotist 100, weren't we, boys? Well, and Nick Brabot just pre- presents the whole thing? Yeah, well, no, at least the top 10. Oh, yeah, that would be good. I'd be down for that. But he was asking too much coin. <laughs> yeah, he is a big name these days. He is. He's a big boy and he's a big name. <laughs> Superwog's joining us. Oh yeah, that's right. The Superwog. Welcome. Hey, you what's up? <laughs> I thought you were doing that voice. No, no, no. I don't do um, impressions. What are you doing? <laughs> no. No. That's not me, Timmy. Think it's someone else. Uh, so, uh, what number are we up to in the countdown? Whoa, boys? whoa, whoa, whoa! I, I'm, be, I'm, I've got it all sorted, mate. We just wanted to introduce you. I'm just saying. You come in here and you tell no, us. No, while to, you're while you're happening. Having the podcast happen, I'm over there in an intense game of Mario Party back on the N64. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah. don't... Iridji Dig Mario Party playing as Donkey Kong, currently it... sitting in third place. Mate. See, Tim, this is why we don't bring externals in. You he know, comes we're, in we're here. We're running on time. He starts talking about Donkey Kong. I ask him, you know, don't don't tell me how to run the the, the countdown. But seriously, like, how, how do you run a countdown? Because I've stuffed it up a few times. <laughs> yeah. And one more outburst like that, Jesse, you'll be back on the couch. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fair. All righty. Well, let's kick things off with Jesse Mawson. Uh, do you want to introduce this clip, Jesse? It's number 75. Clip number 75. That the fin sprint is now four times 50 metre legs. What? I thought it was four times 25. Has, I, it, has it jumped up? I think it might be 50 yeah. metres. Dear. Uh, or have, <laughs> did you write that down in notes? Have you got that anywhere? Or is it? This is. I'm just recalling a conversation I had with Robbie. Um, a friend of ours who's also in the Budgie Boys. And I think he mentioned that it, it's 50. But surely, what would Robbie know? <laughs> he never has body surfed before. Yeah, no, no clue. I don't know what he thinks he knows. Now, you're good friends with Robbie. You know what? In actuality, he was right. It is four by 50 metre lengths. Surely not. Well, That's regardless, what it was regardless of what it was, it did we not, did terrible. It didn't feel like 50. I watched you. It felt like 50 because you were <laughs> slow as anything. <laughs> it felt like a lot more than 50. It's not as easy as it looks, all right? It wasn't as easy as it looked. I didn't run this year, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Thank the Lord you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we had a practice run. I finished like four lengths behind everyone else. <laughs> we're the only team that had a practice run. We came, what, fourth? We came fourth. I mean, you cheated. <laughs> T- Whoa. 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 Did what? I did I- not. I the did not, there was no cheating going on. Go to the go to the tape. I think we have. Yeah, we've gone to the tape. You <laughs> you run like <laughs> <laughs> I run twenty five meters before you is like halfway done and you start running. <laughs> That's true. All right. Well, let's get into it. We uh, want to get through this. We've got a lot to get there. Like, well, I want to get out of here. I want to go to the pub. I want to celebrate this long weekend. Oh, that's true, Tim. It is the long weekend. So this is number 74. By the way, Jesse, can you turn your mic off next time? Uh, this is number 74. <laughs> <Don't> you do that? <laughs> this is what happens when Oe goes to Jamboree. If you trace back a couple of podcasts ago, we talked about going to our favorite break, Mystics. Yeah. But obviously have not been uh, for a few years now. <laughs> and we still haven't been. We always talked about going there. We always said we might pop into Jamboree on the way and control the action and have a bit of a toboggan. And How good is Jamboree? They've got a wave pool. Can you body <laughs> yeah. surf in the wave pool at Jamboree? Nah, I've done things in the wave pool, but... <laughs> but I haven't body surfed in it. Now, this came up later when we spoke to Ricky after Womp Off. What actually happened? Well, I pooed in the wave pool. (laughs) But (laughs) uh, what I want to talk about is Jamboree's uh, tagline, controlling the action. How good's being an adult? (laughs) You just control the action whenever you want. (laughs) (laughs) Mate, I've been controlling action all morning, all (laughs) afternoon, all night. Uh, Tim, we don't do impressions here. (laughs) Keep it rolling. All right, this is number 73. And it is the road to Womp Off. We're right in the thick of it now, Tim. Oh, not long to go. Oh, under two weeks. It's like it's like the lead up to Christmas. Is it? Yeah. 
You get. I hate Christmas. Yeah, this is better than Christmas. Yeah, this is better than Christmas. <laughs> we say oh, a lot, don't we? <sighs> it's not as good as the ch on the beers, but <laughs> maybe maybe we'll just release uh, some of the best sound effects mm. from the podcast. Sure. We could do it on a soundboard. A, a Foley artist could use that in a, a feature film. Maybe McG. <sighs> How could McG, by the way? No more McG <laughs> chat. No one knows who McG oh, I got is. No idea what you blokes are talking Very about. Very famous eh? film director. The OC, Transformers, Transformers, Terminator, well, Terminator Salvation. Terminator. I got no idea. Yeah. Anywho, let's keep things going. Oh, by the way, don't when we go to Urban Surf, don't poo in the way. We're not pool. going to Urban Surf, Tim, aren't we? Not that I know about. Oh. Is that a secret? It hasn't been announced yet. Well, who's announcing it? Not me. Yeah. Does it need to be announced? Well, not by us. Okay. Why are we whispering? Shh, it's a secret. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Play a the sh- next clip. Yeah. All right, Jesse, here's the next clip. Also, just chill out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. This isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> All right, sorry, mate. I've been to, it definitely is. I've been to two rodeos. <laughs> This is number 70. Have we just played 73? Yeah, this is number 72. 72. Mark Hunter. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you should probably say that with an American accent. I think he is American. Can you do an American accent? Mark Hunter. That's pretty good. But that sounds like, so it sounds like you're saying a a rude word if you say it too quickly. (laughs) So you slow it right down. Mark Mark Hunter. Hunter. and that's ex- right, okay. Well, and that's exactly why we don't do impersonations, Tim. <laughs> you can't, can't do terrible an American either, yeah. No, can't do anything. Can't do Lebanese, can't do you American. You guys remember that uh, that footballer, Carmichael Hunt? Yeah. yeah Just as bad. It is, Short yeah. Man. Yeah, now there's a there's a Mark Hunter on uh, on um, 11, no, not 1170, uh, 1017, Sky. Oh, Sky Racing, yeah, Sports yeah, Radio. Yeah, 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 he does the tips. You any good? Pick a winner? Oh, I don't know. I, I see. I don't know if they, they might be the same person. Mm. Could be. So who was that, Mark? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you meant to say it slow, Tim. I just slow, mate. No. <laughs> slow it down. How do How do you spell it's it? Just worked it out. Mark C U. <laughs> how do you spell it? I'll actually have to beat that out. Okay. <laughs> now you'll be right. Um, can you grab us a pen, uh, just a pencil, Jesse? When I play this next clip, this is number. You're not going to beep it out, are you, Tim? This is number 71. 71. Hello, and welcome to Womp Week. Here we are. I was going to call it the Woad to Womp Off. Oh, uh, yeah. If Alliteration. Anyone, if anyone's familiar with the talk show host, Jonathan Wass, <laughs> that's how he would he would say it. <laughs> I sure hope no one's offended by that, Tim. Well, we have a lot of fans over in the UK and they might love Jonathan Ross. He's actually quite a good talent. He's a good TV presenter. I'm not sure if he body surfs, but he has a slight speech impediment. Mm. And it's just that, yeah, it's just, it's the, he, he says R's like, he says R's like W's. Yeah. Which sucks because his name, his last name is Ross. Yeah, see, mm, yeah, really bad actually. That, that happens quite a lot though to people. Yep. They have like if they have a certain ailment, like they'll their name will be <laughs> be something that you can make fun of them by. <laughs> I know one person in particular. I'm not going to name. I hope I think you know who I'm talking about. Oh, we'll talk about off air then. Just, it's, it's not. It's not appropriate to say. If, and if you want to know what it is, come and talk to me at Womp Off. I'm, I'm keen and I will say it to you. You'll probably not laugh and never want to listen to the podcast again. <laughs> but come and ask me anyway. Well, we normally don't do this, but maybe we should announce what day it is. It's Monday night. It's mm. 25 minutes past eight. <laughs> Judging by the uh, clock on the microwave. Now, is that it's accurate? A, it's a little fast. <laughs> a little fast. Now... We've used the mic. That's the second time that this microwave has been in the podcast. It's actually a little slot. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's uh, it's twenty six minutes past eight. You better get that fixed, Tim. You're quite OCD about those things, so mm. I'm sure you'll uh, get to that very quick. But yes, you're right, Tim. It's Monday night, and we've got a little surprise for you listeners out there. Uh, now. It might not be too much of a surprise and you might not be that excited about it. <laughs> People might not want to us to do this, but we're doing it anyway. Tim, what is it? It is the Woad de Wampa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
me to explain why. No, it's Womp Week. We're going to be doing a podcast every single day in the lead up to Womp Off. Now, a lot of the content that we'll be talking about here isn't really in line with what we regularly do. Um, what we regularly do is just talk absolutely about anything we want and for the last two and a half minutes, that's what we've been doing. And we, we need to cut it down, Tim, because we, if we want to get five of these out and keep people listening, we're going to cut these episodes down, keep them a bit shorter and uh, talk what's relevant to Womp Off this week and we're only five days away. It's crazy. Mate, you want to keep it short. That's uh, that's <laughs> the longest clip I've ever heard. Well, I thought I'd whack that in because that was the first Womp Week episode, episode one of Womp Week, and I think we'll be doing that for years to come. That was a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> I that think was it was just a light. Yeah, it was just well, it was low, a low light probably. Yeah. I didn't vote for it. Uh, How to get on there? Uh, what number is it in at? It came in at 71. See, that's one of those ones that would be in the uh, hottest 200. Are you telling the me... Bodice the bodice Are you Sorry. telling me that beat Haloop from episode 13? <laughs> well, I don't think we've played episode 13. We're keeping that. That's the good stuff. Oh, yeah, that is. That's the gold. Uh, anywho, let's get back into it with number 70. Haloop and welcome to Womp Week 2019. It's Friday. It's the day before Womp Off. I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> Womp Week was a highlight for me. Absolutely. To be honest, that was better than the last clip, <laughs> so makes sense. All right, number 69. Hello and welcome to Womp Week episode four. <laughs> These are just, this is just all Womp Week. All right, number... That's a good week. Number 69's a good number though, Tim. You should have put something in there. Something, something sexual. Come on, mate. <laughs> Well, everyone does it, Tim. Just get with the times. Yeah, everything. It's is. cheap laughs. That's it's, all people need these days. It's, it's provocative. All they want. It gets the people going. It Let's does. get into number seven. Oh, sorry, 68. Hello and welcome to Womp Week episode three. Uh, we've got a very special guest today, don't we, Owie? Well, yeah. It's, listen, Tim, it's day three. And just like the great Lord and Saviour rose again on day three, here he is, Jesus. No, Jesse Mawson, he's with us. <laughs> he's got a beard like Jesus, but he's not Jesus. Although, if you were, mate, what, what could you do for us? Gee, actually, you wouldn't be too good. I mean, he'd be walking on water, wouldn't he? <laughs> we no use at the Womp Off. <laughs> and you're still with us. I'm still here. Walking on water still, mate? Nah, I sunk. Yeah, well... Sunk yeah. at Womp Off. I heard you smoked. Uh, <laughs> heard you smoked everyone. Yeah, smoked they, must, they mustn't have seen me, mate, because I smoked Maxie that day. <laughs> Smoked him. Did you? I don't know. I was in the water with him. I didn't see anything. <laughs> they came like, did they come third? They, unofficially? Unofficially. If they had completed a few more rounds, they would have done all right. Well, hey, all I care about is where we came. Yeah, but also like 18 tourists died at Backpackers <laughs> Rip that day. <laughs> no one was manning it. <laughs> Unlucky. All right. Now, okay. For the next few clips... I'm just going to rapid fire this. Oh, do it, please. So do it. there's a lot of halopes coming up. <laughs> oh, don't give it away. This is what the people wanted. This is number... That's what I wanted. This is number 67. Hello. Hello. And welcome to Womp Week. <laughs> Here we are. No, that's not, that's not right. You've... Tim, 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 you haven't changed. Here, I haven't changed your check. pads. No, I feel like I have. You should fix it up. No, I've changed it. No, that well, was it. That well, was the actual clip. We've heard that twice already, Tim. No, I, don't, I think that's fresh. We say we repeat ourselves a lot. Okay. Being repetitive is our job. I thought you were rapid firing this. Let's go. R being repetitive is our job. <laughs> being Number repetitive is our job. <laughs> it's our job. It's your job. It's our job to be repetitive. That's right. My job? It's your job. It's my job. It's your job. To be repetitive. Yep. Number 66. Hello. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that that was a lot better. Okay, that was from episode five of Between the Sets. That sounded really clean. I liked it. That was good. Can I hear that again? Hello. Oh, yeah. yeah beautiful. Now, that's the one. That's the... Just save that on the bank. Yeah. Uh, this is number 65. Hello. Yeah, that's nice. And 64. Hello. <laughs> that's 64. And 63. 63. Now, Hello. Can, now, can I get a combination of 65 and 64? Hello. 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 Oh. Hello. 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 Oh, that's good. They got that little bit of variance. I like oh, it. Oh, that's good. We could remix that. He does say well a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to? That's 64. Hello. Okay, that's 64. This is 63. Hello and welcome. 
<laughs> the Belly Slater podcast. <laughs> is that how we're starting podcasts these days? This is it. This is the Belly Slater podcast. Yeah. This is what you've waited for. Yeah, that was a bit different. That was us <laughs> introducing Belly Slater. Now, I just want to play that again because if you listen to it really carefully, I don't actually say loop. <laughs> <laughs> Take a listen. So this is... I listened the first time, Tim. It's very clear you don't say hello. <laughs> this is number 62. Hello and welcome to the Belly Slater podcast. <laughs> is that how we're starting podcasts these days? This is it. This is the Belly Slater podcast. Yeah. This is what you've waited for. Yeah. And to be I've... honest, mate, it's just a bit unnerving, you know? Well, no, no, I don't think it is. I think it's showing honour and respect exactly. to one of the greatest body surfers of all time, Billy Slater. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> you it's don't unnerving. have the same respect for him. No, I can, no, I, I can hear I think, it in your I voice. I think he's great. I think he's absolutely fantastic. I just think it's kind of like, I don't know, finding a, a dead cockroach in your, in your budgies. I don't know how it got there, but... It's it's a bit awkward. Next thing I know, you're going to be saying you smoked belly. Yeah. No, 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 no definitely oh, not. I could just imagine it. <laughs> there he is over there. Oh, I smoked Maxi. Now I smoked belly. Did smoke Maxi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keep it going. Keep it going. 61. Hello. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Can I get a 61 into a 64? Ooh, combination 61, 64. It's also my favourite Chinese meal. <laughs> oh, yeah. We ordered the 64 one time, Tim. Didn't was that end up the, too good. The rainbow chicken? That was the um, the duck. Rainbow duck? The bee duck. Bukaki duck. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't say the word. Say that, what, what, is that, what does it mean? Nothing good. Okay. Nothing I wouldn't good. Google it. <laughs> this, is number, this is number 60. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Not as good. Yeah, now that one was t- too quick. But yeah. it, it's still up there. You should, Tim, maybe next year. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> oh, not the hottest, not the yeah. bottest 100. I'm talking about when we're introducing oh, the yeah, podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe we do use one of those. I think, it, what was the good one? What was the good yeah, one? The 60, somewhere in between 62 good. and yeah. 68, there was yeah. a few good ones. Delicious. All right, now this is number 59. Hello. Yep, yep, good. Uh, I think we're back into real content now. This is number fifty-eight. Well, we haven't had you on since. Uh, well, we we did uh, we did Womp Camp together, but we you were yeah. the first guest. Yeah, when was that? Did we? So what? Well, Womp Camp was oh, a couple of months ago, but June. the first the first episode ever was twenty seventh of January. This year. So yeah, right. Wow. We've come a long way. Almost a year ago. <laughs> I know. Uh, you've been listening. Have we improved at all or no? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no. Well, that's good. He's not wrong. <laughs> He's very accurate, actually. And like, I respect Ricky so much. And to get that feedback, to get that note, I was like, yeah, I probably should pull my head in. No. Nah. Well, see, I didn't want to improve. <laughs> Do you think we've improved, Jesse? No. Nah. No, well, see, nah, that's I'm, good. I'm with Ricky. I'm with Ricky. I can't fault him. Yeah, that's good. And that, see, the thing is, that's where we want our listeners to just be with us. Be with us on this journey of getting worse and worse at the craft we're doing. Oh, yeah. Um, we will get there one day. Nah. As long as we... Where are we going to? Uh, well, Where are we trying to get to? We're going to Melbourne, but we can't talk about it. We're going to <laughs> California. We're going to Hawaii. We're going to Mystics again. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't go to Mystics the first time. Oh, we're going uh, Monday. You coming? Yeah, beautiful. Sounds Lovely. good. See you there. You'll be on dad duty. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. It's a public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, your kid just gives up on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to grandma's. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, good. Does grandma get public holiday rates? No. <laughs> Does she uh, She make good coin? You no. pay You pay Gma? Nah. No way. She you gets... Don't... She gets kisses with my daughter. She's fine. Well, that's nice. Yeah, a bit of tummy time. Yeah. Grandmas love a bit of tummy time with bubs, yeah? Bit of tummy time. Yeah. This is number 57. Now, this is a good clip. This is when we gave away the Benway hand plane. Oh, yeah. And uh, this was the first competition we kind of ran. It was the Secret Sound, a radio staple. And uh, the, the people loved it. The listeners loved it. They all got involved. A lot of great guesses came through, mm. but only one could take it out. But we, we're really excited because uh, we've got a massive competition that we've been running for the last few months, really. And we've finally 
got a winner. It's gone off, Owie. It has, yeah. So this was the Benway Community Collaboration Competition. We're giving away a uh, original Budgie Boy Benway hand plane, which you guys designed. Yes. Should, now, should we listen to the secret sound? No, I don't have that sort of. You don't have it loaded up? We can do it in post. <laughs> You've all heard it a million times. Yeah, you know it. what it is. Well, not many of you really got it, but... Uh, we had lots of guesses. Heaps of guesses, but we have a correct guesser on the line. Oe, do you want to introduce her? Yes. Layla, Taylor. Hi. Hello, are you on the line? Are you there, mate? I uh, sure am. Mate, congratulations. <laughs> You've won the Ben Way Should we do a round, round yeah, of well applause? Done, yes. Well done. Thank how, you. How do you feel? I'm surprised. I never win anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can't say you never win anything. Now, should we tell the yeah. listeners what the uh, what the sound was? Yeah, Layla, what, what was the secret sound? It was a cicada saying thank you for being saved from the ocean at Stanwell Park. That's right. So, Oe actually was out at Stanwell Park one day and a cicada was just flapping around in the water. He wasn't looking very good and Oe rescued him and that's what the sound was. So, well done for guessing that and the Benway hand plane is all yours. Thank you. Can't wait to give it a tap. Yeah, we actually might get you back on the show and you can give it a bit of a review for us. Yeah, well, we're, it's very different to anything I have at the moment, so it'd be good to give it a go. Yeah, awesome. We're all very keen to, to, to know how it goes. It looks amazing, so we'll get that out to you shortly. Perfect. Thank you. All right, now just hang on the line and we'll grab your details and we'll send that out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, well, there you go. How good's Nick's little laugh? Yeah. It's cute, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it'd be good just to have him as your Paul Schaefer. Yeah, just that's sitting right. sitting at the back, sort of... Uh, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's that? Uh, hand plane. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We should give more things away this year, Tim. Well, I thought I thought we would, would have some big giveaways. I want to do something huge. And if we were to do it, I would like to run it through the socials. Mm. So follow us at Budgie Boys. Oh, yeah. You know, remember when we were trying to get the dick gliders up to um, 800 followers or something? Mm, dick watch. Yeah, Dick Watch. Dick watch. Yeah, we I'm should. looking forward to that coming up on the list. Yeah. Oh, I hope it made it. I <laughs> hope it made it. Tim. Well, I haven't been in contact with the, the, the gliders. Yeah, they've while. fallen off the face of the earth a little they bit. Had, After they had their competition. Yeah, I think someone died. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> weren't insured. I think top prize was for biggest wipeout. <laughs> so. Yeah. He won, but he lost at life. <laughs> you know, the... Uh, one of my highlights of the year was when Barrel Pig was riding the um, the dick foamy. It's so good. So it's a little foam hand plane that looks like a penis. And it has testicles as well. And Barrel Pig was saying, the balls kind of drag a bit. Yeah. So he said, <laughs> you, need to, my language. you need to straddle them. <laughs> you need to straddle them and ride the, ride the nutties. Oh. <laughs> and it, it planed better, apparently. Yeah. That's good. Hey, the, the community is coming together. All right, let's get back into the countdown with number 56. And I believe Jesse Mawson uh, gets referred. You're not in this clip, but you do get referred to in this clip. This is number 56. What do you need for Christmas, Tim? Well, I I think about Jesse Mawson, the co-captain of the Budgie Boys. And often for Christmas, he gets a brand new hand plane. Yeah. Brand new budgies. Yeah. Brand new flippers. Everything. He got a he got a wetsuit the other year as well. That, Everything. That would be nice. I know. It would be nice. I mean, imagine if you had a family or people who loved you <laughs> and cared about you. It'd be so good. What does that feel like, Jesse? Tell you what, mate. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Yeah. To know that you to know that you loved and to know that you wanted, unlike you boys. Oh, so, hey, <laughs> whoa, hey, whoa! You can't say that. Oh, well, no, I've got I've got a missos now. Yeah, oh, no. and April's misso. Uh, so Ari's misso. Uh, April uh, actually, she uh, gave me a Bunnings voucher for my birthday. Yeah. Oh, how good! Huh? Yeah, she's very. That's good. What'd she get you for Christmas, Oe? Uh, she got me. Oh, hear, hear this: uh, a Bluetooth to RCA converter. Yeah, now you were talking about this the other day. <laughs> people like go, oh, that's a terrible gift. That's like one of the best gifts I've ever Not been given. Not many people will understand what this is, but it is a game changer. Yeah, it's a full game changer. See, I got, I got no idea. Well, it's Bluetooth. I, I got that part. To RCA. What's RCA? Well, it means you can plug it in your old stereo and play things from my phone from across the room without plugging it into it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you I know. I see what you're saying. You know, because a lot of the new ones, they have the Bluetooth already in there. But the old speakers and the old systems, the old amps, they're better. So now I've got Bluetooth capability on my good old amp. Yeah, it's uh, analog to digital. Mm. I see. A, a very thoughtful gift. Yeah. I Sounds also got it. a uh, 
uh, a Morton Bay fig sapling. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't laugh at these gifts. These are very thoughtful gifts yeah, that what? I really want. I don't know what a sapling is. It's uh, like a little baby tree. Uh, I think that's the right word for it. This sounds like duds. No, uh, I no. What? I'm I'm pretty stoked with my Bunnings voucher. Okay. okay no, no, the Bunnings voucher is good. Don't get me wrong. I got Bunnings voucher. Yeah, I always miss those paying out. <laughs> she is. She really She's great is. Value. It's my birthday coming up in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. April, sadly. if you're listening. You've got your miso looking after you. You'll get yeah. like 20 hooded towels, 20 hand planes, yeah, heaps of flippers. Yeah, you could get your own Morton Bay fig sapling. <laughs> since, since we've had a daughter, that's not how birthdays and Christmases work anymore. Yeah, we should get back into the countdown, eh? Yeah, no one, yeah. No one wants to hear about your kid, mate. <laughs> All right, this is number 55, and this is the first international guest we ever had on the Body Surf podcast. <laughs> Got to start off with that golden gate time. You know? <laughs> well, that was Dane Torres from Hawaii. Hi as a kite. <laughs> He was he about was, 10 minutes after I got him to take my lounge up the stairs. He was so thankful that a 7-Eleven was across the road from your yeah. place because he was smashing every single bit of food. He that comes was in downstairs. There. Me and the missos have just uh, moved all the things from my old house to my new place. And him and Corey are like, oh, man, we need to go to 7-Eleven, dog. <laughs> We don't do impersonations. Yeah, that was great. That was really <laughs> good. The best impersonation we've ever done. And I was like, not until you take my lounge up the stairs. He's like, oh, cool, man. So I have one of the best body surfers in the world <laughs> <laughs> carrying my shit up my stairs before he goes and gets himself a little treaty. And he was... You carried it up the stairs? No, no. I th- uh, well, escalator. no, he went in the, he went in the elevator. elevator. He was elevator. extremely <laughs> jet lagged and very hungry. <laughs> And he was still helping out with yeah, the move. And then he sat down and had a chat with us. And he was so lovely. It was so cool. Yeah, good bloke. Top bloke. Great body surfer. And hopefully we'll get a few more international guests on the Body Surf podcast this year. Mm. Let's hit number 54. Yeah, good stuff. <coughs> <laughs> now, um, there's been some stuff going on up north, OE. <laughs> That's one of the worst clips of all time. I don't know why that cut out. It does explain, like, because you asked me, are you going to leave that in? I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, it was a coughing fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had water go down the windpipe. That's what you've, you've done. You've left a coughing fit in this countdown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the people voted for what they exactly. wanted to hear. And, like, as you can tell, the last 50 or so clips have been absolute gold. Mm. I need more loops. Oh, they're coming. Um, (laughs) This next clip is absolute gold. I don't know why it's so low in the countdown. It's number 53. Now get ready for a Belly Slater rant. We are taking out the fin sprint. See, this is it. This is it, right? (laughs) Okay, I'm okay. All right. Shoot. You can write that down and underline it three times. Rule number one, no DMCs. Great fins for in the water, but it's it's like performance enhancing drugs to use them on on sand. They're made of silicon. They bend under your feet. It's not like running in fins. So get rid of get rid of them. That's why the cobras won. Oh. They're all wearing DMCs. Everyone's like, oh, they must be so fast, so quick off the mark. They're they're cheating. That was it was it was a hundred percent cheating. They are disqualified. They did. What? They are disqualified. So bait bay one. So bait by one. Officially bait by one. You can't. That- you can't. It's like running we in spikes. Second. Yes. We're still. The it's like running in spikes. This Shire. this year it can't be DMCs and, and and yeah and Don McCready's not the kind of guy you want to fight with. I mean he'll put up a huge fight, no doubt. But like, I mean what what are we going to do? We've got to we've got to protect the integrity of the sport, and uh, D- DMC fins have no place in the sport. The whole point is that the fins are meant to impede you. If anything, DM DMC fins are actually fantastic for sprinting, and, and that's a huge plug for Don. He should go and sell his fins at fucking track meets. And, <laughs> but we don't. We, they, there's no place for DMCs in a fin sprint. Uh, so that's number one. Number two. Number two. And Ricky's in the room with us right now. And and uh, this is a plea to Ricky. I, I I want the fin sprint relay. I love the fin sprint relay, but I want I want that glory again. There has to be an individual competition. You can't run it over fifty wimpy meters. Um, this should be a fifteen hundred, and 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 I'm 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 keen to do it. Like a, a, okay, we have a believer in the house. That's. The, I think that's what we need to do. I think we need the team event, and I think we also need to get our marquee fee sprinter out there, on the on the track, 
um, to take home the gold for their club. There is rumours of the Bondi lifeguards um, having a team. So do you really want to take them I don't, I, over, <laughs> over 1,500 metres? I am the fastest thing on two fins. <laughs> I, I will make them wish that they were never born. I will rip off their arms and beat them to death with them. I will. If you make an individual fin speed, it could be over any distance. I will win it. <laughs> do you understand? Any distance. Any distance. Any distance. I, I've won one. I won one in woman, and I, there is no feeling in the world that compares to winning a fin sprint. That feeling when, when you've reached full velocity and you look to your side and no one's near you and like, you know, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this! <laughs> a- and you break through that line first. There is nothing like it. I'm so hungry for this. I was completely gypped out of it the other year where there was a, a, a quadruple false start. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I told Tim about this and he started two seconds later than everyone else because yeah. he was I was very convinced. nervous of getting disqualified. Yeah, yeah. I've watched so many false starts, especially in swimming. And I feel so embarrassed for the person who doesn't have to get... Yep. I, I didn't want to be that person. Yeah, yeah. I, I whispered in, like, Tim, you can go now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ricky does a great job. Full, full props to Ricky, but he's got to tighten the screws on the fin spin because it's been a farce. It's been, yeah. a, it's been a joke um, si- since it was started. The only fair race that's been ro- won is the one that I won. <laughs> Uh, and, and and every other has just been a complete shit show. So I'm I'm really putting the pressure on Ricky to tighten to, to put the clamps down on the fin sprint and make it the the event that it deserves to be. I was not expecting that response. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> what well, have well, you got installed well, this year? And, and, and here's and here's something else. If Ricky doesn't do it, then Belly's taking the fin sprint and he's creating his own fin Olympics. <laughs> if that's not number one, Tim. <laughs> I don't know what you've got left. Wait for number one. Mate, the only farce I've heard here is that that is sitting in the top. Well, it's not sitting in the top 10. That was number 53. That's outrageous. Yeah. But think about that's it. That's the most controversial thing that's happened in this podcast so far. Think about how much gold is yet to come. <laughs> think about all the <laughs> memories we have on this podcast. They're all locked and loaded, ready to go. You're telling me that you've got 50 clips that are better than that. Well, there's a few more hellopes to come our way. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> but then there's some gold coming through. So uh, that was number 53. That was Belly Slater's rant. And I welcome the Finn Olympics. Yeah, me too. And I would like the official broadcast rights to that game. Yeah. If the Finn Olympics are happening, I'm competing in the hammer toss. <laughs> that's my That's my <laughs> game. Oh, well, that would be good on Finns. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you get extra spring. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm all over it. I think Maxie's got you covered, though. <laughs> Smoke Maxie. <laughs> Smoke him in the water. All right. Smoke him at the hammer toss. <laughs> this is number 52, another Belly Slater clip. We're walking up to the cabin before, and we were like, do you live in the Gold Coast? No, 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 no. I'm no, from Willoughby. No, no, and I've been loving that as well, that you've all been wondering where yeah. I live and saying it's been so hard to organise an interview with yeah. me because I live so far away. And really, I live just you around... Live in Sydney. You know, I like to think there's a little bit of belly in all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm and I'm always I'm always closer than you think. Yeah, that's true. You know, physically watching you through your window as you change out of your wetsuit. Well, we said someone said to us earlier today that you were you've been at Womp Camp since about Thursday, just hiding, <laughs> <laughs> waiting to jump out. And someone and said that someone said to me today at the the campfire. Um, Whenever you talk about Belly, he seems to pop out from a bush. And so uh, I'm here as if I'm like, wait, it's like, it's like lying in wait, waiting for... Yeah, like Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Oh, is that me? Yeah. Michael, is that me? Michael Keaton. Yeah, Michael Keaton. How good is Michael Keaton? Pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, but he looks like an arsehole. No, he, I, don't, I think he looks like a dude. That's why I like him. He doesn't look like a Hollywood actor. He looks like a dude. Yeah, but he does love himself. He's one of the greatest actors of all time. Yeah. Well, are you afforded, uh, like, to be an arsehole if you're good? I think it's more admirable if you are that talented and then a top bloke as well. Yeah. But then you are sort of given a bit of leeway if you are a great actor or a great talent. Yeah, well, that's like the Hugh Jackman effect, isn't it? He's, he hasn't, a, he's a nice bloke, yeah. Nice bloke. And also talented. And also yeah. talented. And Wolverine. So, like, people... Uh, love him mm. but then aren't intimidated by him because of his sort of uh, creativity see the problem is we're not nice blokes and we're not talented either yeah we're just dudes yeah we're just blokes that's like why society is like so bad because there's just people like us walking around yeah but I'm middle aged white male so it's fine yeah I've got to press this and uh, move that one here 
And this is number 51. Now, this is Oe explaining his passion for radio. Uh, I was a big fan of the Triple M show back at the, at the Easter <laughs> show every year. And I'd have it every year I'd take the, the bag because you got an actual backpack yeah. and I would take the new bag to school every year. And so for about four or five years running, I had the Triple M show bag as my, my school bag. It was quite trendy back in those days. Yeah, man, and yeah. that just goes to show how into uh, radio and, and um, this type of... Uh, creative medium we were as children I mean, no one else had a triple m bag that they no. were taking to school and triple m was rocking the shire <laughs> it was rocking the shire that's right it was there, there wasn't too many other stations playing akadaka back then <laughs> you know it was Not just many play it now yeah, well that's right uh we're in big trouble here tim now jesse did you eat all my chips no, 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 there's still some left, oh, mate. Oh, good, I've got some for that, you. That's my what, dinner. What flavour? Oh, I don't like this. I don't like them. Salt and vinegar. You don't yeah. like them? No. You don't like I salt and vinegar. I left them over mm. for you. I'll be, I'll be having those corn chips later. Right. Oh, yeah. Timmy, you are a big fan of the corn chips. Here's a little... Can you get that away from the <laughs> microphone? <laughs> hang on, hang on. I've got to have some. Oh, oh, that's good, Sam. We could sell that. Yeah. There you go. McGee will love that for his next big feature film. You're welcome. Now, you make a really good guac. Yeah, well, I was going to say, here's a little tip. Don't waste your time with salsa. Everyone gets salsa and it's like got chunky bits of capsicum in it. Mm. Like, no one wants that. Yeah. Just go straight to taco sauce. Oh, the taco Whoa. sauce is brilliant. Just dip your chips straight into taco sauce. You yeah, the, I can get behind that. Are I you on the taco it. sauce? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Salsa's overrated. Mm. Now, I love a good narco. Narco? Yeah, is you it, into the narcos? Is that a like a a pub narco? Isn't that a Netflix yeah, a documentary? <laughs> no, no, not the nar- not Netflix. <laughs> nachos. But it's like a pub nachos. Nachos. Where they make it out of like a spag bowl mince. Yeah. The problem I have, I call them narcos, is because some lady in front of us at the <laughs> RSL said, I'll have the nachos. There's no T in nachos. <laughs> what do I call them? I say something weird. Yeah. Don't I? Nachos. Yeah, the nachos. Nachos. <laughs> Hey, you just like my dad says sushi when he orders sushi. <laughs> oh, what the heck is a sushi? That'll do me. <laughs> Food chat. 13, 24, 10. What, <laughs> what do you uh, mispronounce? <laughs> uh, what phone number is that? Uh, 13, 24, is 10. It, is that 2GB? No, I think it's Nova. 9481. Yeah, one, it is Nova. Nova. Whatever you do, don't call that number because <laughs> <laughs> I will get in trouble. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get into it. We're halfway there. Yep. This is number 50. <laughs> but we have a very, very special guest. You might know him from the Today Show. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Gilby from War Handplanes. Welcome back to the podcast. Oh, boys, it is good to be back. It is good to be back. Now, this was big news for me. I'm a big fan of the Today Show. Really? I actually, I, I I'm did- more of a sunrise kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one is. What do you no. mean? Oh, what, you like the cash cow? <laughs> Who doesn't like the cash cow? Oh, yeah. I get all my financial advice from Koshi and the cash cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm actually a big fan of, uh, what's his name on the Nine Network? Dickie. Richard Wilkins. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I did uh, work experience on the Today Show. Yeah. Uh, Dickie was on there. And you know, once once I did a, a red carpet event and Dickie was there Is and my, good- my mate went up to him and goes, oh, do you remember old mate? Uh, you did work experience with him. He's yeah. like, no idea. <laughs> no <laughs> idea. He is a big boy. And he's he? like, mate, I'm hanging out with Russell Crowe. Yeah. I don't know who the, Tim from the Body Serve podcast is. Well, Timmy, you do have an IMDB page. That's so true. He could look that up at any yeah, time. That's true. This is uh, my impression of, I know we don't do impressions. <laughs> this is my impression of Richard Wilkins uh, doing a review of, say, like a Kylie Minogue album. It's not good, but it's not bad. Four stars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. Oh, Very that's accurate. too good, Timmy. He's just so impartial yeah, to everything. Is. Yeah, well, that's right. You can't have an opinion these days. No, no. opinions. But do you wake up with today? No, you wake up no. with Koshy. Yeah, yeah totally you're a Kosh dog. dog. Anywho, I, uh, the uh, Sam Mac bandwagon. Oh, uh, Sammy Mac. Oh, we know. Radio, yeah. radio royalty. Yeah, he is. Used to do Brecky in WA. Mm. Um, I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> royalty. <laughs> royalty. <laughs> he, WA no, royalty. He's been around for a long time and then, yeah, he got his, his big get on the uh, the Sunrise Show. He's good. Doing the weather. He's not good. He's not bad. Four stars. Four stars. Four stars. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to number 49. Speaking of a salt dog, we've got a salty dog with us. Ooga. 
You're Ooga. joining us for the whole show. Oh dear, how are you guys? How are you uh, doing, mate? Uga from Keel Down Under. Yeah. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining us. Well, how are you doing, you. man? Thank you for having me. Yeah, good, good. Now, how do you pronounce your name? Your actual name? Oh, uh, that's just too hard. It's too hard? Yeah, people have tried. They've given up. Okay, I think, okay, give I, us, give us I think I've given up on it as well. <laughs> okay, so it's just Uga. Yeah, Uga. It's, it's actually Uglesha. Oh. <laughs> exactly. That's why everyone, everyone has given up. <laughs> and how, I, many, how many syllables are in that? I'll tell you what, it would be good when you're ordering a milkshake down at the North Cronulla Kiosk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because they're terrible. Like, they just read out every one syllable name. If your name's Matt or Tim, you just sort of hear a mumble like, yeah. your order's ready, but yeah, yeah you'll, you'll be like, your full name. I usually, if the weirdest sound I hear, that's me. I usually stand up and it's ready, you know, bacon, egg, and. Hey, Tim, can you play some Serbian music? <laughs> <laughs> Good gear. Now, uh, we had a New Year's Eve party and um, we had a couple of Serbians <laughs> on the rooftop yep. and uh, it got to about 1.30 in the morning and they just wanted to hear Serbian music, which you do. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Serbian. Fine. And Timmy, you played it. I was coming through really bad, but they loved it. Well, Uga comes up to me like a week later. Uh, out in the surf, and he goes, were you at that New Year's Eve party? <laughs> Mate, how'd you miss me? Yeah, we had like a 20-minute conversation. Yeah. The best thing was everyone was singing along. The Serbians were singing along. The people that weren't Serbian were singing along. It doesn't matter. No one would know if you knew the lyrics or not. It was just a, a lot of like, it sounded like a record going backwards. It yeah. sounded like the chick at the North Cronulla kiosk. <laughs> 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 we should get her on the potty. Oh, yeah. She's as much of Budgie Boy as you and me. Very much so. She feels the Budgie Boy. She does. She introduced the Budgie Boy. <laughs> we should be hydrated by Harry Man Brewery and fueled mm. by North Cronulla Chaos. Yep. Get them on board. Let's do it. I don't think they really want to be associated with us, but we'll send an email. Wolfo, can you get on that, by the way? Yeah. Also, Wolfo, why aren't you here? Oh, he's away with the kidlet. Executive producer. Mm. This is his big day, yeah. putting together this countdown. Mm. There's nowhere to be found. Dodgers barrels, now is dodging the countdown. That's it. They probably sponsor the all-seasons body surface. Yeah, they're up there a lot. Mm. they got polos, so I mean, they're... Oh, I love Maybe that's why she's not saying your name properly. Oh, yeah. Why she's like, Mang. Yeah, she doesn't of, care about us. She's boycotting the budgie boys. Mm. The boycott boys. Okay, roll it on. All right, this is number 48. Bring your keyboard along and you can play the Womp Camp song live and sing it with an audience. I think that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, it's like like a version. Yes. <laughs> oh, we could do a like a version. Like a version. We could get him to sing your rap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did we ever yeah. play that? By the we did we play, did that. play yeah, that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think yeah, it was right. decided that yeah. we would never play it again. <laughs> that's right. We got in trouble. Yeah. I got a record deal out of it, but <laughs> no wackers. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're in big trouble. We could have a band. Hmm. All the musicians from uh, around the body surfing community. Well, Uga is an amazing piano oh, player. Oh, yeah, really good. And he was telling me actually uh, two nights ago at the uh, Blind Bear that he is not classically trained. He's just He just picked it up. YouTube trained. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, He's very, so. very good. I yeah, would have never known. Never know. You play bass guitar. I do play bass guitar. Timmy, you play everything. I can, I can sort of fumble my way through everything. Very talented you are. The only thing I can't do is sing. I'm an awful singer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but have you heard Chris Martin? I was going to say, have you heard Jimmy <laughs> Fallon? If you just put on a funny voice, yeah, people do, think yeah. you can sing. That's right. That's how Tones and I got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, baby. I would love to hear Jimmy Fallon do a Tones and I impression. Oh, yeah. That would be good. Anywho, what number are we up to? We're up to number 47. Number 47. Well, yeah, I'm I'm a bit scared, to be honest. Like, I mean, I've I've called us as coming last this <laughs> well, year. Well, you know, last year we came second last. That's the right. Budgie Boys came second last. And uh, uh, this year I think we can do it. This year I think we can well, come last. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. No, we did <laughs> No, we avoided last spot. Who did come last? The Bondi the lifeguards, because Jesse yeah. smoked Maxi. That's He's been right. telling the Senate this for years. I told you the whole time. Since day one, <laughs> Listen, I not. smoked him in the water, smoked him in the hammer toss, whatever else you want to put me up against him in, I'll smoke him all day. Listen, I've been quite drunk for most of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so if you told me anything on those days, I can't remember it. So tell me again. What I smoked him. Okay. <laughs> he one smoked block. him, Tim. Get Ricky to read the scores out again. Because <laughs> he read them wrong the first time. <laughs> you know we're going to use that for like a promo grab. Just smoked him. What'd you do? I smoked him. 
Wake up with Tim and Owie. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's get into it. Now, this is, uh, I get to actually. Let's get into it. We're 60 clips in, Tim. <laughs> this is number 46, and now I actually get to introduce this, and I'll back announce it as well. We introduced the podcast. <laughs> this is number 56. This is a fan favorite. This is straight out of Wompton. I think you mean 46. What did I say? 56. You said 56. Oh, I hope we're not at 56. <laughs> 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 we're going back. I want to get out of here. <laughs> this is 46. My apologies. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, straight out of Wompton by... NWA? Can someone do a quick joke out of that acronym? No. Nah. Nah. Okay. Send New us through, wave order. Send us through some snail mail. And we'll, no, NWA. NWA, mate. Yeah. So the waves, something, you know. Yeah. Um, noobs. Is noobs with an N or a K? We'll get belly on it. We'll get belly on it. Noobs, waves. Yeah, pass on that one, Ricky. Uh, Achilles? Uh, no, ACL? <laughs> Roll, the- <laughs> Roll the clip. Okay, this is straight out of Wompton by your boy. You are about to witness the strength of beach knowledge. Straight out of Wompton, crazy motherfucker named CK. From a gang of body bashes from Bait Bay. When I'm cold on, I gotta drop on. Squeeze tight with my hand plane on. Okay, mate, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. Uh, you convinced me to do that. I, th- I thought it was a good idea. No, okay. New rule for 2020. No song parodies. No Fitzy and Whips. No, I like Fitzy and Whip. You can do the songs. You're more musically talented anyway. Well, I did do the Silky Smooth footy theme song. Yeah, but that's not to do with body surfing. Have you done a body surfing song? No. Nah. I leave it to Belly. Yeah, that's true. We talked about this. That You just can't touch it. No. Nah. He's got the market. Can't touch this. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a, po- a parody of that. But what's the, the body surfing reference? I don't know. Mm. We'll work it out. Okay. Number <laughs> 45. Uh, Oi, uh, this is one of yours. One of your best. Okay. Number 45. Yeah. Long story short, every time I unlock the car, the alarm goes off and I can't turn it off. So if you've got any pointers for that, send us an email. Can you um, just cut the horn? I'm not cutting the horn, mate. Then how how am I going to drive to work and honk everyone when I'm frustrated sitting in traffic? I don't do that, by the way. I don't like people who honk the horn. No. There shouldn't be horns in cars. No, I think it's a safety feature. I think but they have to have a horn, yeah, but a working horn. How does it? How does it make things more safe? To make people aware of if something is going to happen, right? So but if someone's like reversing and you go dick, exactly, dick. but like we use them to say good day to our mates, or we use them to tell someone to you know hurry up or whatever. We use them inappropriately, but they are designed to help us. Well, yeah, okay, all right, Tim. Well, uh, there you go. I'm not going to cut the horn if it's a safety feature. <laughs> I want to feel safe on the road. You probably won't pass Rego with a cut horn. <laughs> But at least <laughs> I tell you, I, I won't be passing Rego anyway, regardless <laughs> of the cut horn. I'm going to backtrack on the no horns in cars statement because I really like that sign you put up, especially at like youth camps and things. Honk if you're horny. That's good. It's not good. You don't like honk if you're horny? No. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> I like it. I think it's fun. I want maybe honk if you listen to the Body Serve podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can get behind that. Okay. Behind you know, that. Uh, I'm not, you've got a lot of sexual energy these days and I don't like it. Yeah. It's the new missus. <laughs> <laughs> it's the humidity in this room, Tim. Yeah, it is it's getting It's very hot. warm. It's very warm. So now. let's get out of here and uh, just keep playing these clips. This is number 44. Mate, very special guest in here tonight. Huge get for us. Yeah. Very big guest. From the South Coast Body surf- Surfers, uh, Justin Spittle. How you doing, mate? Hey, guys. How you going? Thanks for coming down. Oh, cheers. You're more it's handsome good. in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see? Oh, he's so sexual. Flirting with our guests. So inappropriate. I swing both ways, Tim. I don't discriminate. No. And <laughs> Just- Justin, you know, I was stoked to get Justin on as a guest. He's a, he's a sick body surfer, but a top bloke and just a great chat. Yeah. Yeah. I voted yes. You voted yes? Yeah. Yeah, cool. How'd you vote, Jess? I, I, I didn't. Oh, oh donkey. Here we go. He threw here his go. vote away. Um, Mate, yep. you're it's the voice. Now. You're the voice. You've got to understand it. Mm. I, I, sing it loud yeah. and <laughs> sing it clear. Uh, so how do you vote politically? 
Is this is this the time we're going to discuss this? Which yeah. way does it hang? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you swing? Do you <laughs> do you um cook your pasta before you put it in the oven for a pasta bake? That's a that's a real. I I don't make pasta bake. Or I think he's a greens voter. Greens. Who doesn't? Is that yeah? Who doesn't make pasta yeah, bake? I know it's like the well, most why, delicious dish ever, and it's such an easy it? thing because you melt the cheese. Well, on you've it. never had a pasta. No, bake. I've had pasta bake. I've just never gone out of my way to make one myself. It's probably one of the easiest dishes mm. you can make. It's literally putting pasta in an oven. But why would I put it in an oven when I can just put it in a pot? Well, it's not baked then. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a that's, pasta pot. But see, that's easier that way. I. This is why we need Robbie Miller. He's a very good cook (laughs) and he could answer all these questions. Actually, catch us soon. Tim and Robbie body surfing the menu. (laughs) Coming to ABC. (laughs) We've got a book deal as well. Oh, that's good. Every dish is just carbs. (laughs) No vitamins at all. (laughs) With a side of beer. Yeah, carbs and protein with a lot of beer. Delicious. Which is just more carbs and sugar. And then you just got to swim for like four days straight to burn it off. Now, what number are we up to over there? We're up to number 43. And now speaking of another competition, let's get straight into one of ours, (laughs) which I'm really (laughs) excited about. It's the uh, board giveaway. We're giving away a Hydro Zapper boogie board. The Frank Zapper. We're giving away Frank. We're giving away Frank. We've (laughs) nicknamed him Frank. I have no idea why we're giving away a boogie board on the Body Surf podcast. We're kind of anti boogie board. Oh, you bought the flippers and you got the board. Should we tell the whole (laughs) thing? No, no, no. Well, we're just giving it away. Someone valued at uh, $119.95. Should we give it to Uga? Ooga, do you want a boogie board, man? Oh, I think I'm fine with this. <laughs> no, the real winner is at Happy Snaps. With Robbie. With Robbie. <laughs> well done, Robbie. Uh, the this- only person to get tagged in the whole post. Yeah. So it goes to show nobody likes bodyboarding anymore. <laughs> right, South Coast Chompers? <laughs> That's it. I'm, no, you boys are pretty good at bodyboarding. Have you seen their posts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah They're yeah. good. Good boys. But uh, yeah, as I said... Bodyboarding probably died around 1997, <laughs> and so it's all about body surfing. The, num- is- the number one song from Frank Zappa, by the way, is Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. Oh. <laughs> is it a, like a comedic song? I don't know. No. I think it, I... It was legit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That was actually in the uh, Hottest 100 of 54. Ah, oh, was it? No, 74. 1874? <laughs> no, 1974. <laughs> you miss every shot you don't take. That's it. All right, so let's just uh, keep moving on because I feel like we are getting real itchy feet and want to get the hell out of here. No, I don't. I want to stay here all night, Tim. Well, I, I, I actually want to do justice to this. This is the Bodist 100, mm. and people have been waiting for a while to hear this. That's right, and you want to be able to listen to it on the long weekend. You might be sitting by the pool. You might be having a nice relaxing day with a beer in your hand, in your spa or in your in your lounge chair, and we're just talking a bit of bit of rubbish, you know? Mm. We're talking this, we're talking that. We've got Jesse here, we've got Timmy here, we've got Owie here. My my biggest issue is that when we play a clip, we start talking about something else that doesn't relate to the clip and we should be saving that for between the sets. Oh yeah. So let's just get back into the clips. This is number 52, and I believe this is Nick Brabot's first reference. 42. 42. Oh, Jesse, what would I do without you? Can you stick around for the rest of the show? No, nah, I've got to go. <laughs> He's one of the kid. Got to get get back to the kid. No way. <laughs> Mrs. has got her. Oh, yeah, the missos. How is the missos? Fine. Play the next clip. Are <laughs> you expecting child number two anytime soon? Is she no, preg- no, She's no, pregnant. No, Definitely not. Mm. So do we wait till the first birthday before we even discuss number two? Okay. Oh, not even. No, okay. Yeah. Okay. Give it Off time to heal. <laughs> number forty-two. I, I, um, I would really like to be friends with Nick Brabot. I've been, tr- <laughs> I've been trying really hard. It hasn't really happened. Have you added him on Facebook yet? I, yeah, I think I have. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I just want someone to help me move, and he looks like the kind of guy <laughs> that would do that. <laughs> The problem is he has to rotate when he's going through the door. <laughs> but he's just very nice and very strong. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I want in a friend. You need a nice, strong man. We don't have any of those <laughs> at all. We've got... Uh, mm. Yeah. He's a classic big, strong boy, isn't he? he? Can't think of anyone. He is. Yeah, You always want a nice, strong boy. Mm. Like, if I was to swing that way, mm. 
Not I that I do. Did. No, you no. Just claimed before you did. No, 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 no. See, see. Now I'll have he's a, backtracking on this statement I'll have as well. A, I'll have a threesome <laughs> with a male and a female. Well, but as long as there's a female involved, you can beep that out, Tim. Right? I'm leaving everything. In. Okay, okay. I'm even going to let my c word. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say the c word. I'm going to leave that in. When did you say that? Did I pronounced someone's name wrong. The deep blue c word. <laughs> Oh, gee. No, yeah, Nick, very strong boy. Well, let me tell you something for free, and this goes for everyone. (laughs) This goes for absolutely everyone. There's a lot of strong, mean people out there. Yeah. It's hard to find a big, strong, nice person. Mm. And Nick is that person. Yeah, his nickname is Naughty, though. I think that's just because he likes a little session. (laughs) (laughs) Like on on the beers. Oh, yeah. Like oh, just on the beers. Like a, a 1.2. Well, you're getting wet either way, aren't you, Tim? <laughs> Come on, mate. I feel like I'm just starting these awful catchphrases. <laughs> just going downhill very quickly. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Roll the next clip. What number are we up to, Jesse? Not in the 50s. <laughs> We're up to 41. <laughs> number 41. Now, this clip is really, really good. No, it's not. It's another hello. Loop. <laughs> <laughs> that was number 41. Now let's get That's straight into it. Best. Let's just keep it rolling. This is number 40. <laughs> Do we have a sound grab or something for that? Is there like a bell? Have or we something? ever had a sound grab? I oh, see. These are the things that you need to start working on, Tim. You've got, a, you've got so much equipment here. You, you're sitting there drinking out of your drink bottle, like thinking it's all happening. But when we can have like little funny grabs. And you could just be stinging them all over the shop, but you don't want to do any of that. Well, then you turn up to like, you know, Mitt and Muffy in the morning yeah. and it's just going to be awful. Well, it's, it can't get much worse, but... <laughs> Mitt and Muffy in the morning? Who's, who's Mitt and Muffy? Well, I'm Mitt and you're Muffy. <laughs> Tim, I shave, thank you very much. <laughs> now, <laughs> you didn't like that joke? I, I, I don't know. It's just, you know how <laughs> radio duos always have silly nicknames? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. The do Muff Dog. Do Last you, uh, photo we took. Is someone's talk. phone going off? Oh, it is too. This is Frank Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it away. I can't. I don't have the rights to it. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I'm going to get done. <laughs> oh dear. Fair right. But do you shave, Owie? No. Yeah. Oh gosh, no. You're very. Hairy. No, uh, my missus is very bohemian. <laughs> El Natural. El Nat. Yeah. Yeah. What about Uh, you, Jesse? You like the long arm hair or? I have long arm hair. No, no, like underarm hair. Oh, yeah, for sure. On a female. No. Hmm. Oh, that's a bit sexist. No, just just personal preference. That's it. Whatever I can do, she she can do. Mm. Yeah, if she wants to grow it, that's fine. But she doesn't. I think we should start a campaign for Jesse's Miss O'Eleanor to grow her pits out. Yeah. Yeah. Pits for wheat wheat pits. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Hashtag wheat pits. That's good. Let's get it trending. Yeah. Let's get it viral. Yeah. Hashtag wheat pits. Would she do it? Would no, Eleanor I doubt, do that? I doubt it. I doubt it. There's no what way. What if it was for like charity? Maybe. Okay. Okay. She's we- got to go to school looking like that. Like yeah. walking around other kids. She does wear a lot of open armed yeah. um, clothes. So maybe it won't happen, but we'll see. We'll see. She could braid it. <laughs> <laughs> At least make it look nice and neat and tidy. <laughs> <laughs> There's your sound effect. Is that 39? <laughs> <laughs> We're actually up to 39. Yeah, Thanks, Zoe. I well got done. It. This is number 39. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boys, Tim and Oe. And we're coming to you live from Seal Rocks. How are you Seals doing? Rock or seal or Seal? One rock. Seal, multiple rock. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You're, you're down pat. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're doing a live outside broadcast. First ever. With a huge panel of body surfers. I think this is the biggest panel anyone's ever had. How many mics have we got here? Put your hand up if you're on a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of us. Yeah, nice. We're coming to you live from Womp Camp. And one thing we really want to talk about, everyone wants to talk about it, especially since we have recently announced where it's going to be held. 2019 Womp Off is going to be at Maroubra Beach uh, in October. October. October Ooh. 5, mate. Not far away. It's the road to Womp Off. It's Here the road to are. Womp Off. Everyone's been training and we're going to get uh, the team captains from a few of the teams who will be competing on the podcast today to talk about 
uh, their preparation for the big competition. But we've also got the founder of Womp off Ricky with us and uh, there's a few changes actually that are going to be going down at Wompoff this year. Ricky how you doing mate? As he takes a swig of hairy man. Of hairy man. Oh yeah. yum. Yeah I'm good I'm good. I got a quick question before I jump in. Do yeah. you do that intro every time? I thought that was a recording. <laughs> no no he does it every time. We don't have that sort of technology. It time, does it sound exactly the same every time? That's great. Well, man, we must have been smashing Red Bulls because we sound like chipmunks. We're going yeah, that's, so that quick fast. there. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of energy mm. outside. Birds were chirping. You get that with is a it, live audience. Is mm. it the Red Bull or is it the Hairy Man pop out? Oh, well, that's got a lot of sugar yeah, in it as well. Probably the same amount of sugar content. Yeah. Good drop. Great drop. Great drop. Great drop. How good was Womp Camp? I know a lot of clips are coming up from Womp Camp and I just can't wait to do it again. But doing that panel was unbelievable and then doing the exclusive interview with Belly Slater. Who would you like to interview at Womp Camp this year? It's got to be Simon. Svensson. But yeah. we, we, we might have an exclusive with him sooner than you think. Mm. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully we've got him sooner than later because we want to get he him. He was Womper of the Year. Exactly. Womp off 2019. You, you want to get him while he's still hot. Yeah. Because um, do you reckon he could win the Gert twice? Hard. If anyone's going to do it, it's him. Yeah, it's hard to back up, you know, two years in a row. It's no, hard. but it wasn't just on the day, though. He was leading up to Womp Off, yeah. just content, mm. content, yeah. content. And it was great stuff. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Although I didn't see him running on the uh, treadmill. No, not this year. But mm. last, you only need to do it once, Tim. You know that. It's like the haloops. Do it <laughs> once. <laughs> no, we keep, keep pasting her in. If, if Ricky's told me any, or taught me anything about uh, life and about recycling, mm. it's just reuse everything, including, <laughs> including your <laughs> shitty jokes. <laughs> Fire them away. All right. This is number 38. And this is a great story that Captain Cookman told us about being late to work. Now, I think I played the wrong clip earlier. Anywho, this is number 38. Captain Cookman, late to work. We end up going to Cronulla Point, and it was just bombing. And Ollie was going to go somewhere else, but Spurlo, Russell, and myself just said, yep, we're in, jumped in. And it was just a monster. Like, these things, you could drive a bus through some of these, like, just dropping into them, you're just like... Oh, wow. I remember the, uh, and, the swell. Yeah, and it was, it was a, huge. It was a big old day. And so I did that. Um, we had that surf. It was, it was a fun session. You know, I went, I'm going in, you know, this was the Coza sizer because I went, I'm not taking my GoPro, no evidence, no, you know, getting shit. Um, so we did that. But then throughout, I got to work late. Like I didn't get to work to about 10 o'clock. And I'm usually in about 7.30. So I was late. And my manager at the time was like, oh, where are you, Daniel? And I said, oh, yeah. One of the young fellas was sick. Um, yeah, he's been you know, a bit crook last night, so I was just you know, trying to help out there. Um, my wife, Lauren, get everyone settled. And I, you know, and we just went on. The day was on. Throughout the day, in the age of social media, mm. things started to drop. Um, so um, so a, photo, a photographer, Chris Stroh, legendary bodyboard you know, video and photographer from the Cronulla region, um, posted a picture on his Facebook or whatever. So, you know, someone's tagged Russell Pollard in there, born with gills, I tagged him in it. And so then he's tagged me in it. But then I could see that people I knew from home, my brother-in-law, <laughs> could see this story going on. I was like, wow, okay. How do we, we're struggling here. So that, but that day happened. Nothing spilled out. The lie was in. And I continued on my day. A couple of days later, it was then like, because oh, I think, you know, Dave Archer from Garage had been at a session at Avalon. I think even um, Jake, um, the barrel pig, had, had had a good session as well. So they ended up um, touching base, like Coastal Watch coming, oh, we want to run an article. Yeah. And they ended up touching base with us to go, oh, we'd like to write something about it. Mm. So the plot starts, you know, this lie is getting deeper. Mm. Um, the body surfers that took on Sydney's big swell, I believe, was the headline. That was the one. So mm. we wrote a bit of an article. Now, um, needless to say, I'd gone to Chris Stroh after the photos dropped and said, oh, hey, and I told him my story about I've done this lie, I've lied to my wife, I've lied to my boss. Well, he posted that. <laughs> <laughs> so everything was unravelling. But um, but that day, so the Coastal Watch you know, did an article and I was like, oh, I've got to come clean. Like, to who, your boss or to the missus? All to of the, the boss or the boss? 
both bosses. Yeah. So it just unraveled. And so I said, you know, my wife, that day I actually went surfing. Why didn't you tell mm. me? What else have you lied to me about? <laughs> who is she? Oh, it spiraled. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. oh yeah, it got nasty. Who is she? Yeah, who's she? Yeah. I said, well, Russell. Huey. Russell, Spurlo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so, you know, I was, there was plenty of, you know, cold shoulder and hot tongue in that space for a while. Um, but then work people had seen the article as well. So I then had to front up to my boss and just basically say, oh, by the way, you know, I was, I was actually surfing and, and um, so, yeah. And so then the article dropped on Coastal Watch and my wife was like, you only told me because oh, yeah. you'd done that article, mm. you asshole. Yeah. Um, so it was a funny one, but I, <laughs> from there on, I, I haven't lied about a surf session. To the wife? To or the, the wife. Yeah. Or the boss. Or the boss. That's good. I've either planned and said, hey, actually, I'm going to be in a touch late. I'm going. That's uh, that's. And I've great. just had to do that. Mate, that's, yes. that's really positive. That's good to hear. It was. You feel better inside? Now yeah, or then? Yeah. Like, oh, it was, it was a funny one. Just the change, just when you watch this thing spiral out of control and you go, I'm screwed. You can't control the lie. No. There's no control. And that's what I learned from it. So next next sessions and all that kind of stuff, it was a case of just fronting up and going, how hey, I'll be in touch late. I'm going for a surf or my wife, I'm getting up early because I'm going for a wave. You know, fun fact, the film, The Invention of Lying, starring Ricky Gervais, Rob Lowe, Tina Fey. I think that's Jennifer... What's who's the woman who was married to Ben Affleck? Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner. Yeah, that film, The Invention of Lying. Have you seen it? No. No, it's not great. Um, actually, it's got a fifty-six percent uh, scoring on Rotten Tomatoes. What's its IMDb, Tim? Six point four. Okay. Okay. So horrible film, mm. but was based on that story. Yeah, right. Mm. So On Cookman's story. Hopefully Cookman's getting a bit of uh, residuals mm. from that. Well, give us a call. What have you lied to the wife about? Uh, Everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my entire life. Yeah, my whole personality. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get your wife? She's stunning. Yeah, I know. I, it took her a while to realise how good I was. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I smoke Maxi. And she's like, boom, I'm in. Uh, what is a Maxi? <laughs> We're in big trouble. All right, let's keep things going. This is number 37. Yeah, good. <laughs> There's actually... How many haloops are there? There's, well, technically there's 33, but once I said hello, once you did it, once Belly did it, but then I did it a few times in and around Belly's interview. So there, if anyone wants to work out, it's a, around 33. Mm. So are all the haloops in the countdown? Yeah, and you know what? When I put the clips together, we were we had a, we had a, an abundance of, of content. Mm. And I actually had to get rid of some really good clips just to fit the haloops in. <laughs> <laughs> Here's number 36. Haloops! <laughs> That's not a good one. The, the double the loop. That must have been when we had the desk that uh, stuffed up. Yeah, the cooking desk. This yeah. is uh, all right. This is number thirty-five. Hello. Yeah, good. Oh, that's a nice one. That, that is. is a nice that's one. really clean. All right, let's get into some real content now. This is number thirty-four. Our group chat's terrible. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> just How who's is... minding the kid this week. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we having a punt? It's along the lines of that. I'm actually on the group chat right now, and that's exactly <laughs> what it says. <laughs> Pretty much, I'm guilty of that. Oh, how bad is our group chat? It's still terrible. Yeah, what we need to do is uh, get a group chat with all the people that don't have kids, mm -hmm. and then add Robbie. And yeah, that, that will be perfect. Isn't this why we have a head of childcare? But also, so if you, if, that if, he if, is <laughs> looking after the kids while we all surf. If you think about it, if you get rid of everyone that has a kid and add Robbie. <laughs> It's just Jesse. <laughs> well, yeah, Jesse's the only one who's not in the group. Oh, yeah, wudo has gone as well. But Woodo's never here. Woodo's dodging everything. Yeah, he's the barrel dodger. He is. <laughs> he is. Oh, I get out to more surfs than Robbie does. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, then Robbie or Woodo? Definitely more than Woodo. Definitely more than Woodo. Robbie, Robbie likes having a little sesh. He's been out to Cape as well. You two are the Cape boys now. Oh, no. Only he caught more waves out there than I did as well. <laughs> not all heroes wear capes, but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, they they all smoke maxi. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ride this joke into the oh, ground. Yeah, <laughs> it's what we do here. Anyways, this is number thirty three. Gonna have to hit the nor'easter um, swell magnet. So, 
I mean, if you are in the south, that's your Stanley Park beaches. You can't beat the little beachy there. The northern end of Stanley Park is succulent. Succulent Chinese meal <laughs> on a nor'east swell. Now, that was technically the first joke of the Body Surf podcast. <laughs> Look how far we've come. That was your first surf report. Yeah. And you were able to sneak in a little reference yeah. to the succulent Chinese meal guy. <laughs> yeah, he's got a name. What is his name? Um, he doesn't know. Yeah. No, no, I don't know. I That's think something like a Mendoza. Isn't it like 70218? Like, isn't he doing a bit of time? <laughs> yeah, he's doing heaps of time <laughs> for doing runners from Chinese restaurants. Now, this is the... Do we have time for a quick story? Yeah, sure. We've this been is, going for about four hours. This so is the one... Not? This is on... I hope you're okay um, telling this story, Owie, but um, I, it is the funniest story of all time. And I wish you had told this story at your uh, your dad's wake. You said you were going to do it and it never, it never happened. I think we got a bit distracted that night. But the story of your dad always ordering Chinese from the wrong restaurant. Yeah. Can, well, do you mind telling? Oh, it? sure, I'll tell it. Uh, Charles Dozer is the guy. <laughs> okay. Name. So yeah, he's yeah. like a Mendoza. Uh, yeah. So dad used to frequent the uh, the Sharkies Leagues Club um, with myself in tow. Now, if it was past eight pm, I couldn't go inside and play the. Uh, snooker tables so I had to go out and sit in the car great parenting but anyway uh, he would um, order Chinese from uh, what he thought was Hung Sing and so he'd order a fried rice and a honey chicken and a crispy skin chicken because I really like crispy skin chicken um, so he'd, the fried rice honey chicken crispy skin chicken come out hop in the car we'd go up to Woolaware to Hung Sing and go in and the food's not ready. And so this was happening for a, a couple of months. He would keep calling Hung Sing, ordering his food and going there. It wasn't ready. They didn't get the order. And um, one day he goes, oh, well, I'm going to try the King Wan. And you know how much we love the King Wan. Mm. I mean, we have the menu, everything. So um, he goes up to King Wan when he's at the Sharky's Leagues Club and he goes, I'd like to order uh, <laughs> fried rice, uh, honey chicken and a crispy skin chicken. <laughs> and the guy blows up and he goes, it's you. <laughs> no, uh, you're not eating here. And he blew up because <laughs> dad had been calling King Wan <laughs> and ordering this food for like six weeks in a row. <laughs> And piss enough to hung sing up the room. Oh, so. And it's funny that you tell a story about your dad ordering Chinese food because at his wake, I ordered Chinese <laughs> food. <laughs> And it was awful, wasn't it? <laughs> Dad said almost killed me. Now I we did... almost had my funeral later that day. <laughs> <laughs> now I did say the one thing about the location of the wake, Warrenora RSL. Don't eat the Chinese food. And oh, then and everyone comes warned. out with plates of Chinese. I was warned. And I thought, surely they can't mess up a honey chicken. They yeah. can't mess up a sweet and sour <laughs> pork. So me and Robbie ordered both. They literally boiled the chicken and then just put some Monica chicken <laughs> uh, honey on it. It came out all dry and someone drizzled like some sauce that looked like strawberry ice cream topping over it mm. now, I, and expected me to eat it. I ate the fried rice that you left over and it wasn't half bad. Yeah, but they, how do they mess up fried rice? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Well, like I was really hungry given that. Now tell me something. Who's peeling all those little shrimps? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, this is number 32. Now I've got a... Uh, a little personal message from Drew Taylor, who is at the Salty Eyes on Instagram, mm -hmm. saying that Cute Boy claimed that his conversation with Mark Cunningham was his own. His solo session was actually three of us out there for 45 minutes. When Corey said that Mark told him, well, asked him if he was leaving, that was actually said to Drew. Um... Corey was actually across the road. And now Drew says that he's got to keep his son in line. And that's fair enough. If, if Corey's telling lies about something that happened to him that didn't really happen to him, mm. I think it's only fair that he cops a little bit of flack for it. <laughs> so, Corey, we're open uh, to your rebuttal. Uh, you send us an email because you're not coming back in here anytime <laughs> if you're going to be carrying on like that with these lies. Uh, but, mate... I award you no points. <laughs> May God have mercy on your soul. 
<laughs> That's where I'm going to leave it. Nice Billy Madison reference. Yeah. See, so you've got to go with the classics, Tim. It's hard to get an Adam Sandler reference in a podcast these days, but you managed to do it. Mm. It's impressive. But after that, we still invite him to our Womp Off team, <laughs> which he dramatically turns us down in the end to swim for Defin. Well, I would too. Did you see the Defin team? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't blame you. Yeah. They've got all the glory, mate. Go with it. Oh, man. I would be up for it. And, um, but his word means nothing to me now. Oh, no. And it never did before. And you know what's funny? Like, a few of the budgie boys ride with the fin flippers. Uh, you, you ride with the fins. I love my fins. Mm. I actually used the, um, the new prototype soft rubber fins the other day. I was swimming with Corey. And I really liked them. Wait, the soft rubber like the Mark Cunninghams? No, so there's uh, there's the Mark Cunninghams, but I think there's a, a new-ish sort of one coming out oh. that Corey has a prototype for. Interesting. Nice and one, you've Buzz. never really been a fan of the Defins, No, you? I wasn't a fan of the normal Defins because my kick is quite long, so um, the more, I don't know, more rigid fins kind of don't work for that. They're more for short, short sharp kicks. Um, but the soft rubber Defins I really liked, so... Well, I was thinking this would be a great idea if we could. You know how they brought in the wild card to Womp Off. Mm. What if we were to do a trade? What if we were to trade, like Ma- the AFL draft? Exactly. We could trade Matthew Bond, who rides the fin. Mm. He's got some Mark Cunninghams. He's loving them. He does love his Mark Cunninghams. We could trade him for Keely, for Dane, for Corey, for Mark. Imagine if we got Mark on the Budgie Boys. Yeah, I, I like it. I like the idea, Tim, but I don't think it's fair. It's not fair. It's not fair to all the other teams. In what way? Bondi's well, too good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not like that Christmas parcel game where everyone yeah. you know, the secret Santa. Yeah. Which always ends well. <laughs> yeah. When you go home with a candle. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Bill. <laughs> I had an Uncle Bill. He died. Thanks for the reminder. I was going to say Uncle Bob, but then it's like, Bob's your uncle. I didn't want to go cliche, so I went last minute, switched it up to Bill. Regret it. (laughs) You miss every shot you don't take. Exactly. Let's get into another belly clip. This is number 28, and we have a very special guest here. You sound really excited, Tim. I am very excited. (laughs) I've been wanting to interview this man for a very long time. Belly Slater, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me, mate. He's like, I've been looking after Tim <laughs> on this podcast for so long. He's and he just needs help. Are you, and are you frothing? <laughs> he fr- he's frothing right now. Yeah. Like he's been talking about this day since we started. He's like, we've got to get Belly. Belly's the number one. I've I've been listening to the podcast on a regular basis, and the feelings mutual. Wow, I love. I love what you guys are oh, doing. Oh, thanks so I'm much. A, Thank I'm, you. I'm a long time listener, first time guest. Yeah. <laughs> I love that line. Now, we, we call up a lot of radio stations and do a bit of talk back. Have you ever used that line? Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah. Yeah, I have. And does it work? Oh, yeah, they love it. Yeah. I think it's a very welcomed thing when you, you have been listening for a long time. And then you've decided to call. Well, I don't know if you guys uh, caught this, but when we gave away the hand plane to Layla, she said, oh, I've never won anything before. And mm. then I said, well, now you can't say you haven't won anything before. That's an old radio gag. It is, yeah. It's, it's similar to the, the first time caller gag. Mm. Thinking of radio, I just want to do a big shout out to uh, Grant Goldman. Oh, my goodness, you know, yes. You know, you know Grant Goldman, don't you, Jesse? No. Oh, see, he's not. I don't know he's anyone he's, you he's, blokes he's talk out of about the loop. on this. Yeah, yeah, Grant. Not in the radio you, you, scene like yeah, you guys are. You'd recognise his voice. He actually is the voice of Sydney Trains. Used to be. He's not, not anymore. anymore. Okay, no. they should bring it back. Yeah, that would be honor. a really nice touch. Yeah. Um, yeah, Grant passed away a few days ago. He was doing breakfast on. Um, a network of radio stations, uh, the Super Radio Network, and uh, yeah, can pretty much be heard all across Australia. Top bloke. When you, when you say the voice for Sydney Trains, are you talking about the guy that says, like, mind the gap? Yeah, he did the announcements. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, right. like, this train is going to Sutherland, Guy Mir, no, Kirui, Guy Mir, so on and so forth. 
Yeah, yeah he was that guy. And he's dead. He yeah, passed he away, away, and he was quite young as well. Um, he he did have a battle with cancer, and he, he did fight it for a very, very long mm. time. He was actually the ground announcer at Brookvale Oval. Uh, he was a, a Manly fan and used to get out there and... Oh yeah, he 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 told some great stories about getting you know cans chucked at him when mm. he was out there announcing the footy, but this guy has been working hard his whole life broadcasting. He's his son is actually Mike Goldman, who you might know from Big Brother. Did the uh, up late? No, no, yeah, he's no. lost it. That's all right. I know, Tim. I know who you're yeah. talking about. But yeah, absolutely, a huge legend and a, and a big voice in radio and, and and even doing voiceover work for for multiple organisations, including Sydney Rail. I think he had another big big get as well. Mm. Yeah, I can't remember. But yeah. here's to here's to Grant. Yeah, thank you for the inspiration. Exactly. Now we should probably keep moving on with another clip. This is number twenty six. What we've done is we've recorded a podcast with Belly Slater. We recorded it uh, while we were at Womp Camp. We did it in the cabin, and uh, and then we recorded the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good gear. That's an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> oh, mate, you can't miss with that. That's a classic Craig Ferguson joke. Yeah, yeah. I really like that setup. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you got it. What's the old, like, you do the setup where it's like one person's this and one person's that, and then you do the obvious one as the other person? That's like a Craig Ferguson yeah. joke. Yeah. So you say, like, oh, Jesse Mawson and Donald Trump are very similar. One's a crazy dictator, and the other one's Jesse Mawson. Oh, I think that's. No, you stuffed it up. Yeah. The other one's Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, I stuffed it up. <laughs> it's like the most cliche joke, and I stuffed it up. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I liked your joke better. Oh, thanks, thanks, mate. Thanks, thanks for you, that, mate. Harry. Thank you. But yeah, channeling a bit of Craig Ferguson there. Also, I think we're out of clips. Uh, we got to get out of here and count down the last 25 clips of the Bodice 100. The final 25. Well, I'm going to leave you boys to do it. Oh, but you're keeping me accountable. <laughs> I no, can't. I thought you told me to piss off I after... Uh, <laughs> no, after we love time. you, Jesse. Thank you so much yeah, for coming Yeah, thanks for in. coming, man. You're the only budgie boy that's, uh, you know, that's here and that's supporting us. No worries, boys. It's been great to be here. I've got a game of Mario Party waiting for <laughs> <laughs> Whatever so, you do, just keep smoking, Maxie. Is he going to verse you in Mario Party? If he does... Smoke him in that. Ah, <laughs> yes. Standing O for Jesse. Well done. Thanks, boys. Welcome back to The Bodice 100. We're currently sitting at number 25. We should uh, play some of the best body surfing songs. We should have padded it out with that. Rather than talking. I can only think of one song that I would want to play, which we didn't record, and that is The Stiffies. We're going body boarding? Oh, yeah. No, boogie boarding. We're going boogie boarding. Can we re-record that? We're going body surfing or something? Like, can we do our own version of that? Because that's a great song. Well, do you have the rights to it, Tim? Can we play it? We're, we're pretty good mates with the Stiffies. Oh, yeah, they did. They commented on... Uh, yeah, they love our, our content. Photo the yeah. other day, didn't they? They're a great band. Good job, everybody, I think is their tagline. Do you know when we first saw them play? I, have you, you've seen them twice. No, just once. Just once. When we yeah. when we saw him play, it's like this band would shred with a bass player. And then like next minute they got a bass player. Yeah. And they shred. Yeah. <laughs> They're so good. Anywho, this is number twenty five. Well maybe after Wompov we can do what like professional soccer players oh, do and yes. trade do a trade. Trade <laughs> sluggos. <laughs> Might give him a wash first, but uh yeah. That should I'm be not right. washing yours, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and nor what do I now? Well, that's the thing. Do you know, actually, this is a phoner. This is a caller a topic. Do you wash your sluggos straight away after a surf? Oh, gosh, no. You just rinse them in the shower, let them hang to dry, and then you use them maybe like five more times and then give them a wash? I don't even really hang them to dry, Tim. I just <laughs> put them in the, the, the floppy bucket. Yeah, you put them on wet yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looked I painful, it. though. No, it was good. No, they weren't wet. They're just tight. Okay. Yeah, the that's how you want them. Yeah, I got them extra small. <laughs> really want to get it. Yeah, get her in there. Yeah, right inside the speed. Yeah. All right. Here's number twenty-four, and I believe it's another 
This was technically meant to go to air on Tuesday. However, it is currently 1.30 a.m. on Wednesday. And yes, I'm recording this a bit late. I do apologize for that. Now, the reason I am recording this so late is because I went out and had a few drinks tonight. And also, I can't find Owie. Owie is unavailable. He's unable to do the podcast. And... uh, I just don't think it's going to work without him. Now, I actually did a lot of prep today. I wrote a rundown. I wrote some jokes. Okay, mate. (laughs) (laughs) We get it. That clip ran for four minutes. Oh, he said, cut that. (laughs) Thank you. Do you know what's funny later on in the countdown is your introduction for that episode. Oh, yeah. We'll keep that in. Okay. Keep the whole thing (laughs) in. (laughs) Let's go to number 23 now. Now, this needs a very big setup. And actually, he's still here. So, Jesse Mawson, do you mind coming over for one second? Because this is incredible. Jesse Mawson decided to write a poem for Womp Off. Oh, is he going to do it live? 2019. No, we've got the audio here. But, Jesse, what was your inspiration for this poem? My inspiration was when you guys... Uh, said that you were more excited for Womp Off than you were for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that clip actually got played in the... In, it did. It yeah. was played earlier. And so I the reason thought... I, well, the reason I was excited for Christmas is because I was just getting a Morton Bay fig. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Which I'm still... <laughs> sure. Oh, good gear. And, uh, and so I decided, like, well, it needs something. Womp Off needs some sort of, of build... In on top of what you guys were already doing, and mm. so this poem just sprang to mind, and, and it's the first poem that I've ever actually written. So, and I, no, I was really good. Ricky said that he had a really stressful night, um, and then you know what he he listened to the poem, and it got him psyched up for uh, for Womp Off. So, without further ado, here it is. We're less than twenty four hours away. I know, and I think we should mark that occasion with a very special poem written by co-captain of the Budgie Boys, Jesse Mawson. Take it away, Jesse. The Night Before Wompoff by Jesse Mawson. T'was the night before Wompoff and all through Maroubra, not a Wompa was stirring, not even a Cobra. The fins were placed in the floppy bucket in the hope that the swell would make it worth it. The SCB were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of barrels danced in their heads. Come check it out and don't be a hater, the fin sprint can't be won by the belly slater. Away to the comp I'll go in a flash, head to the beach to watch bait bay body bash. When what do my wondering eyes should appear, it's duff in Hawaii that all teams should fear. With the Bondi lifeguard so lively and quick, we hope you judge fairly, but bot Mr. Nick. More rapid than eagles, the budgie boys proclaim. Watch out for East Sydney, because it's their home game. On Ricky, on Corey, on Mark Cunningham, will the cute boy claim another solo session? To the top of the podium, the Reef Kings try crawl. Watch out for Bait Bay, I mean, the Trojans Tattersall. As the team from Perth shows that dugongs can fly, was it worth F? SMBC's time in the sky. The northern beaches wampers refuse to be quiet. Hope the teams from Cronulla don't start a riot. The Goldie Sliders are hoping to rise. Let's pray that their hand planes are of legal size. Get ready for Womp Off, strap yourself in. For only one team can take out the win. But for now, time to rest before first light. Merry Womp Off to all, and to all, good night. How good is that? Oh, that's good <laughs> gear. That is good, good gear. Mate, that, I, that was good shit. <laughs> Some of the absolute best shit. A really, really good, Jesse. I'm really proud of you. Thanks, mate. It was it was a great uh, opportunity. Yeah. To so have anyway, to Jimmy, we just. Uh, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, sorry, we faded you out there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. See you, mate. Bye. <laughs> Let's get straight back into the countdown. We're so close to number one. What will it be? I've I don't know. I've got a lot of money on Tones and I, but um, we're up to number 22. All right, just hold it there. Hold it there. One second. Everyone, can everyone just be silent for one second? All right. 
uh, there's a massive bus coming through. All right, I think we're all right now. And we weren't and we right. <laughs> <laughs> We were cooked. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible audio. But hey, we got through. Do you know what's funny? Like we've had some really bad equipment. Like we've, oh, and I've been putting together content for a while. We've been making podcasts. We've been doing radio shows. We've been making television, and we've never had that good a gear. No, we've always been terrible with audio. Yes, yes. And I actually told this story on the podcast, but I think I got 51% in my audio uh, exam when I studied production. Mm. And uh, now that's all I do. Yeah. And I'm heaps bad at <laughs> Still it. Still terrible. But now with this new gear, like I think we are going to take the podcast to new heights. Yeah, well, it's a lot easier to make things work. But also we're not going to be as sticky as this. Like I think we're not going to be doing grabs every week are we i hope so <laughs> i just want to sit back and relax and talk can, to people can i panel one week oh yes that would be good <laughs> you'll be, like, be better than me though that's the problem I, like i don't think so that's the gag when when um like a radio duo they generally have a panel operator and anchor and then they have the talent and then, then they switch roles mm. and generally the talent's he's bad They're at terrible. paneling but you'll be better than me i don't know tim uh, yeah you'll yeah, be better yeah, no you're pretty you're pretty good on the pots and pans over there uh, i do okay okay, okay. 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 21 21 um you put me on the spot <laughs> now i love that clip because that was the first clip we used when we got the new equipment mm. and it's so good and we we probably should open a lot of shows like that <laughs> that's the new loop <laughs> um, that's you, good how do you do that yeah see it's, oh, good. Yeah, it's nice that's good now uh without further ado here's uh bert newton with 20 to 1 been sitting on that all oh, yeah. night 80 80 clips i've been sitting on oh, that. oh it is it's proper 20 to 1 mm. okay and he's hideously bald now <laughs> he's always been bald yeah he just had a 2p oh yeah um but now he's just owning it yeah but also he doesn't host 20 to 1 do you know who does host yeah, 20 to 1? it's and whip <laughs> they did it for a season and they got a lot of money for that yeah i think they got like i, I probably shouldn't say this <laughs> This is insider yeah, info. Yeah. They got a lot of money. Mm. And then Aaron Molan took over with a comedian. Molman in the morning. It was it was Aaron <laughs> Molman in the morning with <laughs> Dave Thornton. Do you know Dave Thornton? Oh, no, but I want to. Dave Thornton is one of those comedians that's too attractive to do stand-up. Ah, uh, okay. He's very funny, mm. but he's too attractive. Has he been tackled off a stage though, Tim? Oh, he's done the footy show, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if he got... So t- he's racist. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he can wear a dress. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, he doesn't do that sort of Can't gear. Can't we all? He doesn't do that sort of gear. Um, he's a very attractive man, very good stand-up, and hosted 20 to 1 with Aaron Molan. Then he got dumped for some reason. I'm not sure why. And then Aaron started doing 20 to 1 with Nick Kobe. Mm. You don't know him? No. He's like a, He's got a big ginger beard. Okay. Um, he's actually he actually replaced Moon Man in Brisbane. Ah, Moon Man in the morning. So you know, if anyone cared about media as much as we do, they would be able to keep up with this conversation. Yeah. But people just want to know about Instagram. Well, see, uh, see, I don't even care that much about media. <laughs> see, even I'm lost, Tim. So what can I do with this skill? Like, I know all these people. I know I memorize their names. I read all mm. these websites. Yeah. But I can't do anything except maybe host an awful, like, insider yeah. pop culture podcast. Yeah, you could be like the guy on uh, Channel 9 or the other guy on 7 that's like the, the inside reporter. I would love that job. Yeah. I would love that job so much. One of my favorite things was um, when I was doing radio back in the day, I used to have to find three clips of gossip audio, mm. which is a lot harder than it sounds. Yeah. There's a lot of gossip out there. But to find audio that yeah. goes with it. Because a lot of the time it's uh, it's a visual medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was my, my big job. I would come in at like 3 a.m. Try and find some gossip audio. And mm. I loved it. <laughs> and I would love to do that. Like I would love to be that Richard Reed or Richard Wilkins yeah. or... Maybe I just need to change my name to Richard. Yeah. There you go. Dicky. <laughs> we all like a bit of Dicky. We love a bit of Richard. <laughs> Okay. Can 19. you help me out here? What number no, are 19. we up to? We're up to 19. Oh, we're up to 19. Okay. Yeah. This, we're in the top 20, Tim. This is a good one. This is me 
laughing at probably the biggest name we ever got on the show. And I feel really bad for doing this. But he just had such an unusual look on his face Mm. that I actually had to stop the podcast. Take a listen. This is number 19. Awesome. So, (laughs) sorry. Uh, um, (laughs) Who was it? Dane Torres. Oh, really? Yeah. I just, every time I looked at him, because I really was so honored to interview him, I wanted to get deep with him, but... Man, it was hard. Mm. And you weren't there. You were moving and you were you were doing loads up and down yeah, the that's elevator. Right. And I had to interview him sort of one-on-one with Corey and it was very difficult. Mm. I'm not a very, I don't know, I'm not a personable guy. Yeah. So you couldn't do your own radio show by yourself. No. And remember when I had to do the, the one-man show, it was yeah. awful. So mm. yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks for doing this with me, by the way. Oh, that's okay, Tim. I listen. I really enjoy the times we get to spend it together. Is good. We don't hang out much anymore. No, we we go for a surf every now and again. We have a punt together every now and again. But you know, quality time is right here in the we're, studio. We're living our separate lives. Yeah, but we're living the dream as well. Oh, like Jesse Mawson sitting over there. Yeah. He's got to look after a kid. <laughs> what a sucker! <laughs> we're here drinking piss. Yeah, we're going. It's honestly, you know. I don't want to give away everything. Moving magic. What's the microwave say? Nine fifty-five. It's t- it's five minutes to ten, and we're recording. About to go for a punt. We're about to go for a punt. <laughs> I'm probably not going to sleep tonight. Oh no! Get a couple of readies in us. Yeah, we'll be good to go. And then we'll go for a surf, and then we'll just roll it into this massive long weekend. That's it, mate. That's what we're doing. And That's then why we're here. Clock into work on Tuesday morning. At Keep what? it coming. Six a.m. Yep, 6.37. Sure. Get a bacon and egg roll. Works for me. Yep, let's do it. All right, what number are we up to? We're number, up to 18. number 18. All right, this could be a quick one. I might have to press a, I love few, a quickie. few buttons here. And, okay, number 18. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boy, Tim Rankema, because I'm away. I'm gone. I'll be back in a few weeks, but until now, <laughs> I've got to do it again. Oh, no, so <laughs> now i got to do it again. No, i got to do it again. i got to do it again. Go. Hello and welcome to... Haloop or Haloo? Right. Haloop and welcome to the Body Serve Podcast with your budgie boy, Tim Rankema, because I'm away. I'll be back in a few weeks, but until now, here's your host, Timmy Boy Tim Rankema. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Womp Week 2019. Now, this is episode two of Womp Week. So crisp, your haloops. Yeah. I've got to work on mine. I don't know where, like, I know we talked about the origins of the haloop, but I don't really know where it came from. It's from a prank. It, yeah, it is. But also, <laughs> I told Jesse about the first haloop I did on episode one, mm. and I was just trying to make you laugh. So I thought, how could I open the podcast with something ridiculous and it stuck. Yeah, I like it. I feel like tonight's been a bit of a haloop fest. We should find the prank and play it this year on the potty. Yeah, I think we own that. I think we have the rights because it's not us. It's Yeah, it's not us. But we own the rights to it. Yeah. Do you know once something is broadcast, like even this podcast, we put it out to the public, anyone has access to it. Mm. Anyone has the rights to it. You guys can do whatever you want with this. Please don't. <laughs> but if you wanted to um, edit everything we've Sweet ever cake. said and, and make a, you know, what Jimmy Fallon used to do that on The Tonight Show where he would get like speeches from Barack Obama mm. and reword it and it was like a song. It was like a rap song. Yeah, we're not doing that. We don't have time. Do you know how much like effort that would take? There was one guy, and that was his whole job for the year, was Mm. to make a thirty second clip of Barack Obama saying the lyrics to a rap song. It's good though. It's worth it. Is it? No. Uh huh. Probably a million clicks. Yeah. It's probably worth it. What are you selling from that though? You know, Tim. It's all about money these days. Yeah, probably the peacock. NBC's new streaming service. They're okay. probably um, selling a lot of uh, ad time to that. Mm. And uh, hello to any of our Hawaiian listeners listening to KNBC. <laughs> Are we on there? No, but uh, Jimmy Fallon is. Okay. I think that's their affiliate. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you, When you went to Hawaii, did you watch any telly? Oh, no. Gosh, no. And the radio was terrible over there. But I that's the thing. To but it. that's the thing. Who needs it? You're well, in, yeah. You're in Hawaii. Yeah. Like, you're not watching telly. You're riding Harleys in Hawaii. Mm. You know? Just take... I love Katy Perry. Yeah. 
I'm just all about Katie. I've always had a bit of a thing about Katy Perry. Like, I, I, I worry about her. Like, I know she's doing a lot better than I am. Well, but thank, I still worry about thank her. Thank the Lord she's not in a relationship with that wacky man anymore. Hey, hey, he's a nice guy. He's, he? Yeah, no, he's doing real well. Is he? He's just given up on Hollywood. Yeah, he does a podcast now. He does a really successful podcast. Um, he's a very intellectual guy. Mm. I used to dislike him because I thought he used a lot of unnecessary words. Mm. Um, but since he's just taken a step back and chilled out a lot, I, I see his value. Mm. I like him. Okay. All right, let's get back into the countdown. This is number 18. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast. I feel like I've played that one. I think you have played that one. All right, one. so I've got to press this one and then that one. you got one job over there, Tim. Gee whiz, I'm standing here. I'm sweating. I don't like that saying because I've, I've got more than one <laughs> job. <laughs> You're doing all the jobs. <laughs> you loaded every clip. It took a long time, to be <laughs> honest. Um, so this can't be right. That is. Are we up to... Oh, wait, no. We're up to... 17. Or 16. 17. Is this number 17? Yeah. Okay. Let me introduce this. This is a big one. Huge. This is the theme for Womp Camp. Performed by Belly Slater. Well, we've got to get out of here. Uh, we'll do it again <laughs> soon, but that was amazing, Belly Slater. Thanks so much for being a part of the podcast. Playing you out tonight is Belly Slater with the theme song for Womp Camp. Thanks so much for being on the show. <clears throat> the waves are pumping and the wind's offshore. Womp Camp's calling you to come and score. Fat shack, sick pits, air rolls and spins. So grab your hand plane and grab your feet. Womp Camp, Womp Camp Have a barrel of fun at Womp Camp You can ride and slide them straight down the face Or glide and manoeuvre with poison grace Womp Camp is for everyone To make new friends and have fun, fun, fun Womp Camp, Womp Camp Have a barrel of fun at Womp Camp You wake up salty, legs like jelly Can in your hand and a snag in your Heading home, big smile, gills wet, and memories that you'll never forget. Womp camp, womp camp, have a barrel of fun. Oh, won't you take me to womp camp, womp camp, have a barrel of fun, a barrel of fun. <laughs> it's always overhead when you're body surfing. <laughs> Bye. Now, I'm really happy that Ricky was in the room because uh, when um, uh, when he when he does the break for snagging you, Billy, no one else said anything. <laughs> I thought that was Corey. No, 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 that it was, was Ricky. Ricky. Oh, yeah, good. yeah. So that kind of saved the day there. And what a clip! And also, Ricky gets a code credit, like a writing credit. Oh yeah, he does. And he gets some uh, a bit of cash money, yeah, a bit from of that. cash, a bit of royalties. Anywho, let's move on to clip 16. This is number 16 in the Bodist 100. This was when we had a few Queenslanders visit us on the Body Surf podcast. And welcome to Womp Week episode 4. It's Thursday and we have some very special guests all the way from the Gold Coast. Oh, who's on the show tonight? That's it. The Cane Toads are here. <laughs> Welcome, welcome aboard, boys. Now, I, we didn't do any audio prep, so just make sure that you're speaking into those microphones. And we've got Trav, you're back. I'm back, yeah. He's Good back. To be back. You'll Good have to, to be get back. right in there, Trav. Get right in there, mate, yeah, because that's the worst microphone we have. Do you remember that microphone? Yeah, didn't we use it in the water at one point? <laughs> <laughs> and it was not waterproof. We did some Vox Pops uh, at Allura Beach. Yeah, it was a, an AKG microphone from memory. Oh, no. Really? I think so, uh, yeah. Because there's an AKG behind me. The one of the black boys. In there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or was it the Behringer one? I, I think it was the Behringer. Because mm. you wouldn't be putting an AKG in the water. You'd put a Behringer in the water. Yeah. And anyone who loves this audio chat, please uh, subscribe to our, <laughs> our audio we, chat podcast. Yeah, we have an audio chat podcast. But it's I like that clip. <laughs> I like that clip because we were so like, 
uh, tired. <laughs> yeah, but also so harsh. Like, get in yeah, there, get Trav. In and he was just chill with it. Like, yeah, nah, yeah, fair yeah, cool. cool. Got to get in there. And good boys. Yeah. Really good guys. Always fun to chat to the goalie sliders. And you used to roast them hard. Really? You've given them some, some, some crap about being cane toads, about being um, inbreds. Uh, about I've being, never said that, Tim. I think I can find some audio where it's not in the in the hottest 100. Well, but then it never happened. It's it's there. You also called Simon Sven one of their most prized possessions, a slug. He, yeah, well, he is a slug. Did you see him in the fin sprint? But I'm, I'm not backing what down I'm on tr- that. What I'm trying to say is you've given the goalie sliders a bit of crap over the years. Okay. If that's the way you want to put it, that's fine. But they're top blokes. Yeah, I know. I really like them. And they've always... They've pretty much taken us under their wing. Yeah, well, they've superseded us now as a club. But even our first competition that we went to, Womp Off 2018, mm. they were chatting to us. Yeah, sharing beers. It was good. Sharing beers, sharing gazebos. Mm. They were speaking to us like we've known them their whole lives. I've well, never met them before. That's what the body surf community does. Exactly. Tim. It just makes you feel like you're a part of a big family. All righty. Number 15 in the Bodice 100. You haven't told us about you, the biggest sponsor of all. Well, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, he was just showing me this on the Instagram. This looks hilarious. I'm not sure if it's a stitch up or not. Is My this, major sponsor. Is this Your legit? Major sponsor. Six figures. Yeah. Yep. Tell us. Surf in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> what is surf in a bottle? What isn't it? It's a blast of salty goodness in your face. <laughs> now, are we, have you experienced a blast of salty goodness in your face? Of course. Of course I have. I mean, I just love Surf in a Bottle. Surf in a Bottle is one of those products that, as Kookman says, if you don't have access to the surf, you've always got it there right in your, mm. in your vicinity. You can just give yourself a spray. I remember um, I went and got a haircut with a mate once and uh, we both got nice little uh, trims. Mm. And then afterwards, you know, they sort of, some hairdressers have products and they try and sort of sell them to you after you get a haircut. They tried to sell us pretty much the same product. It was just salt water in a spray can, but you put it on your hair to get that beach look. The beach look. And they were charging a lot. And my mate was like, you're kidding, aren't you? It's just salt and water in a yeah. bottle. You know, I just go for a swim. Yeah, <laughs> which I do often. How often do you wash your hair, Tim? I, I haven't washed my hair in about 10 years. What? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Really? I always get a bit self-conscious when I do go to the hairdresser because you're meant to wash it before you get a haircut. Yeah. But they don't seem to mind. Mm. And actually, I was at um, a, a shop the other day. And it's kind of gross, Tim. No, it's not. It actually, you start getting oils that look after and nurture your hair. Well, who, do, who told you this? Uh, a scientist. <laughs> Bat- it was Batman. Yeah. Uh, awesome. But I was at a shop the other day and uh, the person behind the counter was like, oh my goodness, I love your hair so much. And I thought they were talking about the color of my hair because often people are quite taken back by it. But actually they were talking about the, the salty swept look I had. Mm. And they said, how do you do that? And I go, mate, just shred every day. Shred every day. Just rip it hard down every wave and you'll look like this. Rip it, tear it, <laughs> and don't wash. Although Dane Torres has recently shaved his head. and I I'm, know, how sad. I'm thinking about doing the same. You've done it before. It feels so good. Mm. It just feels so good. Anyways, we should get back into the countdown. Number 14. Number 14. Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast the microwave making a like we spoke about the microwave tonight the microwave's there i think the microwave is our third member it really is it really it's is the third heat it is literally do you know the the saying the third heat comes from a television show called 30 rock written uh, by tina fey starring tina fey and alec baldwin and in the first episode there's um a sketch comedy show and there's a female cast member and there's a, a white male cast member and they talk about the third heat who is the third heat we talked about it tonight mm. who's our third heat we think it's casey donovan in 30 rock it's tracy morgan okay and it's such it's i don't I like i love this show so much but at the end of the pilot episode the first episode <laughs> it's so silly they're talking about the the third heat for the whole episode mm. 
but Tracy has not been included in any of these conversations. And at the end of the episode, he yells out, I am the third heat. But he has no <laughs> idea what that means. Doesn't know. <laughs> has no idea. But the microwave is definitely our third heat. And we thank you, microwave. We thank you. And also... Um, Sam. We could call him Sam. Sammy. Oh, Sammy. Tim Owie and Sammy. Tim Owie and Sammy. I like it. Who's a famous Sammy? It's either Sammy J or Sammy... Sammy L. Jackson. What about the Bachelorette? Sam Frost. Frosty. Tim Owie and Sam Frost. That has a ring to it. <laughs> Mate. I don't know. She didn't go too well with Rov. <laughs> Uh, what the? <laughs> this is number 13. We came close to some teams we probably shouldn't, we should have done better than maybe. Yeah. No offense to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fair play, um, actually. That was Justin Spittle giving us a bit of a uh, bit of crapola. Well, we deserve it. We're terrible body surface, Tim. And you know, fair call. The South Coast boys shred. Mm, they do. And uh, I think we're going to see some big things from them. Last year, you predicted the rise of the Goldie Sliders. Yeah. And they did. They, they did. smashed it. I think we can expect similar things from South Coast. They're so consistent. They're so good. They're top blokes. They're always having a surf. Do mm. they work? But also, they never invite us. Yeah, I know. I wake up so early every Sunday morning looking at their Instagram page. To see where they're going to be. And, and then they yeah. change it. Yeah. They always change it last minute. Yeah. And I never go. Because you're not on the uh, message group. You know what? I actually saw uh, Drew today. I should have snuck in there. Oh, did you? Mm. Where'd you see him? He was in the garage of my workplace. I was up fixing some internet issues we had. Mm. He was just walking around. Say hi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't think he really knew why I was there, and I don't really know why he was there. Yeah, so he was like, hi. Yeah. No, nah, I know why he was there. His mate has a shop nearby. What he, kind of shop? A bike, bike shop. Drew's oh, a man. Yeah, he likes a bike. Yeah, yeah. I was bike riding. Yeah, let's keep going with, uh, oh, here, here is a good one. This was like when the Body Surf podcast became a reality television show. This is the, the Corey solo session debacle. Fire it up. Um, the best session I've had so far was a pretty poor swell-wise day down at North Cronulla. Right. But it was a solo session with Mark Cunningham. Mm. Sick. And yeah, that'll stay in my heart forever. It was the day before Womp Off and I was uh, just got out of the water getting dressed and I hear this big deep voice behind me. Hey mate, are you leaving? And I turn around and it's Mark Cunningham. So yeah, we, me and him went out for a solo session for a good half an hour to 40 minutes. Just talking all things body surfing and he's such a down to earth guy. I'll never forget that. And he day. really is. Yeah. Oh man. What a great story. If it was true. I think it was true. <laughs> I'm starting to lean towards it being true. And we've seen, um, since then Corey go to Hawaii mm. and then Corey surf with the Finn at Maroubra. Yeah. And he has such a great relationship with the whole Defin team, including Mark Cunningham. Mm. So, yeah, it, it definitely happened. I'm just not sure of the technicalities yeah. of that solo sesh. And nor do I want to. But also, is a solo sesh really a solo sesh? Because you're with someone else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A so solo sesh is when you're by yourself, and that's very dangerous, and I wouldn't advise it. No, I don't go body surfing at all by myself. Well, sometimes I have to because the Budgie Boys are such slackos. Mm, we are, but I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, Tim, you've just got to you got to get wet and you got to enjoy it. Absolutely. Let's hit up number eleven. This might be a quick one, so get ready to come back. Hello. Oh, very quick. That was a hello from Between the Sets, episode one. That was our first Between the Sets. That was the first hello. Can I get another listen to that? Hello. Oh yeah. Now, if people don't really understand the concept of between the sets, it's a really cool idea. Oh, we came up with it. One week we have a guest. The second week we just chat, and it's kind of like that idea of what you do if you're just when you're waiting for a wave, hanging out the back, waiting for a set to come through. You're chatting. Yeah, talking rubbish. Yeah. And I think it's worked really well. Some of the Between the Set episodes I'm really, really proud of. But we don't talk about them as much because we have, uh, I don't know, I guess we, we care more about the big guests that we get on. Mm. And like absolutely some of the big guests that we got on were amazing. Yep. But some of the, the good gear has come out of those Between the Sets episodes. In our opinion. I mean, <laughs> none of the listeners like it. Also, it's very easy to record. 
Yeah. Compared to organizing a guest, setting up all the equipment, going to their place or them coming to us. When we do it between the sets, we just press record and chat. That's it's right. so much fun. Now, there's been a lot of effort going into this hottest, the bottest 100. Sorry, I keep saying hottest 100. We're going to get sued. Uh, <laughs> top 10. Here we are. This is it. This is the top 10 and things are about to get hectic. Good. I'm talking Fisher hectic. <laughs> We're about to drop a <laughs> banger. This is... Whoa, hold on. I'm about to hit the desk. <laughs> What's happening? What's happened, Tim? This is... The, sus the suspense is killing me. This is number 10 of The Bodice to 100. Ooh, <laughs> careful. There's, people listen to this, Tim. <laughs> I don't think so. Not many people, but people do listen to this. <laughs> now, I don't know what I said there. But it was probably highly offensive. Oh, you did, you probably muted it or <laughs> took it out in post. But I do forget that people do listen to this. We actually have like a pretty big fan base. Yeah, and thank you for listening. Yeah, listeners. absolutely. And also, if you have any advice, if you have any feedback, if you want to come on the podcast, if you have any ideas for guests or segments, let us know. Mm. We love it. Get in touch with us at Budgie Boys on the Instagram. Here we go. Number, Number nine. nine. Here we go. Now, Belly, would you like to do it? Uh, no, you do it. No. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast. Wow. It's just crazy to think that Belly Slater like knows my catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. That's really, really cool. He's a lovely man and uh, definitely one of the highlights of... Our short career. Yeah. My short career. Do you know what? I actually want to be Belly's apprentice. I think you already are. In a way. I don't know. Like, Belly, did you see that thing you posted the other night when I took a photo of the sun? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, it's you. It's you. Uh, yeah, that was really cool. But yeah, I, I want, because my dream in life was, you know, to be a, a greyhound dog race caller. Really? Yeah. That's the first I've heard of it. I would love to do that. I think it's a great way to get into broadcasting mm. because you don't really have to know much about sport. No. You just need to know a little bit about dogs, a bit about form, mm. and then be able to talk really fast. Mm. I can do that. Okay. It's probably very difficult, but I'll give it a go. But what Belly has done is created this alter ego that commentates body surfing. Mm. So niche, mm. so funny, yet so profitable if you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't There's know. not a lot of money in our sport, Tim. You, you could be cashing in on it. Okay, maybe in the future. <laughs> All right, this is number eight. Now, this is also very special. This is the first loop ever. Hello, and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boys, Tim and Owie. Do you remember that? No. I remember I it all. I remember it like it was yesterday. Where did we do it? We were recording it in a studio in Piermont. Mm. It's probably why it sounds a lot better. Yeah. Um, Ricky came in and we interviewed him and then we actually recorded that later. So we did the interview first and then we recorded the rest of the podcast later. Yeah, that's right. And as I said, I just wanted to say something that would get you fired up. Mm. And uh, I don't know, it didn't really work. And it's good to be able to talk about the behind the scenes. I love movie magic. Yeah, it is. Like, we're giving you guys an insight into how we record mm. this podcast. Now, it is as bad as what the podcast is itself, but at least you know what we go through now. Mm. And for all, for more information, just check out my IMDb page. <laughs> just click on <laughs> trivia. There's so much info. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I could get a credit on my IMDb page, The Body Surf Podcast. Oh, that's good. That would be great. Mm. Maybe we have to do a TV show or a movie. Yeah. So I haven't been in anything, Tim, so I, I can't get Weren't you an extra in something? No, nah, that was Schmitty. Weren't you on like Ready, Steady, Cook? Oh, yeah, it was actually. Yeah. Not as a not as a guest. Not as a chef. Yeah, I was a I was a crowd member on Ready Steady yeah. Cook and got asked to come up and eat the food. Isn't yeah. that cool? Yeah, well it was it would have been cool if the, the chef didn't make steak tartare. <laughs> And he didn't even cook it. It's, it was the 10 minute, minute challenge. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 the acid's cooking. I'm like, no, yeah. mate, it's yeah. not. Yeah, I don't think lemon really uh, does anything medium rare these <laughs> days. That's looking pretty blue. It was nice, but and we was. didn't die. Yeah, no, it was lovely. And also we were about 10. I've got the coronavirus, no wackers. <laughs> Just whack a bit of lemon on it. You'll be right. 
<laughs> keeps the flies away. All right, now this is number seven. Now, this is actually the first mention of a nickname that stuck. It's so cool that this nickname stuck because we've given people a lot of nicknames back in the day. Mm. And sometimes they're pretty silly. DJ Dunster. Yep. <laughs> Woodo. Oh, Woodo stuck. That stuck. Yep. Uh, Wolfo, Alex Wolfo, who uh, is our executive producer, he once, someone misspelt his name Sean. in a group chat. Yeah. Mm. He spelt it as Woodo. And it's just stuck, stuck. ever since. Uh, and that's like great. It. But cute boy Corey, that definitely stuck. Who have we got lined up for our next podcast? Very special member of the Bait Bay Body Bashers. Corey Sainsbury is coming up next week. The next big thing in body surfing. Cute boy Corey, I like to call cute him. Cute boy. That's, that's nice. That's a nice name. Maybe that could catch on. Cute boy. And it did catch on. It did. And wow. also, not only did his nickname catch on, but you predicted that he would be the next big thing in body surfing, which he was. Mm. Which he is. Well, it wasn't hard to see. But, yeah. but the problem with his nickname is when he gets like 60 years old, is, st- is he still going to be known as the cute boy? Oh, yeah. That's like because there's the nature boy, Ric Flair. Mm. But I, mean, I think it's kind of like cute boy, you would like just envision a, a younger male. Yeah. But also... In not Aust- too young, obviously. In Australia, we call everything the opposite of what it is. Well, you're saying Corey's not cute. No, but if he was to become, say, very old and ugly, yeah. calling him cute boy could be very ironic and funny. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> I like it. Let's hit number six. Ricky Gilby, thank you very much for being our first guest on the Body Surf oh, Podcast. What an honour. Actually, before you go, we do have a little surprise for you. Hang here one second. Sorry, boys. Let's do this live on the air. Oh, dear. Oh, he's left the studio. I'm nervous. <laughs> I hope he knows where he's going. He's just abandoned us. Is this just a test to see what we talk about whilst he's gone? Nah, we'll probably edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's back. He we got back. you uh, oh. an official Budgie Boys t-shirt Oh, the controversy, I love it <laughs> Thanks for being our first guest, mate Thank you, boys, appreciate it Womp on Yeah, and womp on, Ricky, thank you very much, mate Well, Oi, that's our first podcast <laughs> <laughs> Yeah oh. And I wish it was our last <laughs> <laughs> How bad was that edit? Oh, we've come a long way Not really <laughs> And that's why we stopped editing. We yes. just, just do it live. And that's what I'm so keen to do uh, this year is just long form interviews. Just hit record and have a chat. Keep it going. We don't need all these bells and whistles. No. Nah. But I really enjoyed that first podcast. I loved giving Ricky that Budgie Boy shirt and he did wear it at Warm Camp. Mm. Yeah, I think he had about four of the shirts underneath it. <laughs> he pledges allegiance to every club. Yeah, that's right. He's Mr. Womp. He is. If, if Belly Slater is the the king of of body surfing mm. what's ricky the prince well i don't even think prince is undermining him he's almost like you know mr hollywood oh yeah he brings us all together mm, he he's, does he's running show business behind the scenes yeah 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 Ricky, if you're listening uh, thank you very much for all your support and war hand planes uh, you're doing great stuff this is Number five. The last time I was here, you had the uh, sketchy board, and so let's hope that that doesn't happen again. Well, well, well <laughs> we've already stopped the podcast three times because it's cooked up, Timmy. How's it going over there? Is it all right now? Uh, it's uh, it's overheating a bit. A bit of smoke's coming out <laughs> of it. But Have you dropped your cranberry juice on it yet? <laughs> <laughs> now, the cranberry juice. We should go into the, a little bit of detail yeah. about the cranberry juice. Uh the late great John Laws. He's not dead he's yet, not dead, but he, <laughs> he, he looks like he is. <laughs> <laughs> he does his show from home. He has a studio at home. They call it the what do they call it? The loft or the bunker? I don't know what they do. Yeah, but he's definitely in a red robe. <laughs> yeah, every time he does it with an ISDN line just straight yeah. into the studio and a whiskey mm. at six in the morning. Yeah. Uh, he actually spilled his cranberry juice on his desk. <laughs> I can't believe he still panels. No, well, that's right. He definitely can afford someone to do that for yeah, him. Yeah, that's for sure. But he just he yeah spilled his cranberry juice and he goes, I'm done. 
catch you later and just left. <laughs> well, he had to. <laughs> had to. What did they go to? Do you know? Uh, I think they've got um, a bit of, uh, what's his name? Adam Brand queued up. <laughs> <laughs> That's just their backup disc. <laughs> You know who I like? Adam Harvey. Yeah, well, we're keen to see him soon. Oh, yeah, he's playing down in the Ulladulla region. That would be cool. Little OB for the Fireys. Do you know where we should take this podcast is the Tamworth for the uh, the Country Music Awards. Because there's heaps of surf up there, too. Yeah, but like, I'm sure some country musicians body surf. Name them. I reckon you could name them on one hand. Well, I just named two, and they're the only two I really follow. <laughs> um, Casey Chambers? She reckon she'd give a body surf yeah. a go. Who's Casey Chambers' husband? Oh, I don't know. Hey, Google, me. who's Casey Chambers' husband? Yeah. It turned off. <laughs> she's really <laughs> Google turned off. She's clocked out for the night. Okay. okay, good night. See you, Google. All right, anywho, if you know who Casey Chambers' husband is, uh, we've got an icy can of Coke, icy cold can of Coke. <laughs> For you. Um, we're up to number four, Owie. That's crazy. We're almost there. Should we hit it? Let's hit it. Number four. It is Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. After that, I'm excited. Yeah. Hey, I'm ready to just get wet, strip off. I'm going to be in the, the budgie smugglers. I don't care. Then you'd really hear the bells ringing. <laughs> 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 oh, that's right. Now, I included that clip because was the shittest joke ever told on the podcast <laughs> that got the biggest reaction. That's like a 10-second laugh. Yeah. That was awful. If I was under the mistletoe, I'd make out with, <laughs> with Corey, though. That's right. He can just get away with anything. He yeah. can just say whatever he wants and people are going to laugh. But, Corey, that was a bad joke. <laughs> it's better than anything we've ever <laughs> That's said right. on the podcast. I know. I can dish it out, but I can't cop it. No. All right. We're up to the top three. This is a... Really big deal. Are you ready for this, Zoe? I've been ready since 98 <laughs> for this to finish. <laughs> we, we started this podcast a year ago. Yeah. You weren't born in 98. No, not, no, no. I was born in 98. Oh, you were born in 91. 90. 90. You yeah, got 90 in there. Flat. I got yeah. right there. But I'm talking about 98 in the countdown. Oh, I I've thought been, you meant the year 98. No, 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 no. I've waited a long time for this podcast. All right. The well, number three. Well, let's get through this. The, the top three. This is what you voted for. That's right. Number three, and it's uh, a bit of Jesse Mawson. The uh, natural rudder was dropping the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is your body surfing nickname the natural rudder? The, the natural rudder is when you um, you I feel know, like you drop gonna... out your member. <laughs> I feel like you're going to quote Chris Lilly here. Oh, yeah, it's because uh, they call me donkey. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> like, I got a really big penis. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's Your penis is so you. large, your parents are proud of it. <laughs> that's a weird thing I, to be I, proud yeah, of. I don't know how to respond to that. Well, it's true. Like, mate, I, I, that's so offensive. I, how can that be number two? Three. It's number three. Why oh, is it offensive? Well, I just don't like the... It's vulgar, Tim. You've been very vulgar for the last year. <laughs> why? Well, yeah, no, nah, it's okay. Why it's good. censor yourself now? Yeah, that's right. No, nah, penis chat's good. Well, do you I'm know what's it. funny? When um, we interviewed Belly Slater at Womp Camp, we were there at Seals Rock and he said, mate, where's uh, this wheat picks guy, Jesse Mawson? I've heard a lot about his penis. <laughs> <laughs> I want to check that out. <laughs> Who said this? Belly Slater. Oh, yeah. Because when you talk it up, people want to people want to have a look. I can confirm, and I, the, the, he's got a slug. The thing about the Budgie Boys as well, we often uh, undermined ourselves because we're out in speedos all day. But mm. we'll we'll be like, eh, no, nah, you know, you've confirmed that you've got a micro penis. No, I didn't say that. You have said that on the podcast. I said that. Direct quote, You when I got this new desk, it runs on an SD card, a micro SD card. And you go, <laughs> mate, I've got a lot of things micro. <laughs> well, is it in the, it's not in the bottest 100. No, it didn't so make it. It didn't make the cut. <laughs> Unless it's two or one. But what I'm trying to say, is there's a lot of penis chat when you're out there. Yeah. And if Jesse Mawson's rocking a, a big boy, people want to have a look. Well, we probably should disclaimer the penis chat for the under 18 listeners that we have. That's all I'm saying. 
I think it's okay. It's a medical term. You can say it. Well, what did, what did they say in kindergarten cop? Boys, Boys have, have a penis. Yeah. And girls have? A vagina. Mm. Sex ed 101. There you go. Yeah. Don't need any more, any less. Yeah. That's it. Also, another great film is uh, Look Who's Talking. <laughs> no, it's not. There's a scene where... Uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, there's a scene where they're doing a similar thing with a magazine. Mm. And they're saying to each celebrity which gender they are. And then it gets to a certain celebrity and Kirsty Alley's like, yeah, I'm not really sure about that one. <laughs> Do you know who the celebrity yeah, is? Yeah, I know. Who is it? It's, yeah, no. We no, don't, you can no, say no, it. I'm not naming You can say it. The no. person's dead. You can say no. it. It's Michael Jackson. I know it's Michael Jackson. I don't want to, you can't say Michael Jackson. What? What's he going to do? <laughs> the guy's dead. And also, if he comes to life, he's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> Great musician, though. Oh, and One that's the, the thing. We excuse a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're like, no, we still want to dance to Billie Jean at weddings. Let's yeah. uh, just forget about all the stuff he's done. Yeah, that's right. Anywho, let's... Actually, I don't want to go to this one. Anywho, number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> this is really cute and I feel bad for like all our horrible chat we just had. That's okay. Just we'll take a deep breath. <gasps> number two is um, someone signing off with our classic catchphrase. It's always overhead when you're body surfing. This is a very special guest from the Goldie Sliders signing off the Body Surf podcast. Are we? Oh, no, Ace. No, no, Ace has has got it. Acey boy, remember. It's always overhead when you're body surfing. (laughs) (laughs) What a legend. Yeah. I love little Acey. The the thing about Ace is he's had to sit through two very long podcasts. Yeah, he was almost asleep in the first one. (laughs) And then we're like, oh, Ace, we'll give you a free bodyboard. (laughs) Mate, I was almost asleep and I was anchoring it. But um, yeah, yeah, good on you, Ace. Thanks for um, coming down, you know, it's a big trip. And then he he sits through these podcasts and then he competes Mm. the next day at at different events and things like that. And he went so well this year. Smashed it. Yeah. Got that huge wave and just dropped in and rode it all the way in. I reckon he's the next big thing. Yeah. Corey's gone. He's already made it. Yeah. yeah, Ace. Mm. The next big thing. It will be interesting to follow that and see where it goes. Because, you know, obviously he's going to be body surfing for a while, but he might pick up something else. He's a keen AFL player. He plays cricket too. Plays a bit of cricket. He might jump on a stand-up surfboard and mm. give that a crack like uh, Trav, because I know Trav loves the stand-up as well. So you don't know what Ace is going to do. Mm. He's so young, he's got the he's got so much potential. He the could world do is anything. His oyster. He might want to host a podcast one day. Yeah. Probably not. Give that no. away. We, we can talk you out of that, Ace. Don't, <laughs> don't put yourself through it. <laughs> All right, we're there. This Here is it. The number one clip of the Bodist 100. Are you ready for this, Oe? Well, I wanted to call it the Brabotist 100. So I really, I, mean, I don't know what it is. I really hope it's Nick Brabot. I think you're going to be very happy with this oh, clip. Good. Number one. You're listening to the Body Surf Podcast. I'm big boy Nick Brabot, <laughs> professional body surfer slash bodybuilder. If you want to get jacked like a big boy, you should head into a porto for some flame-grilled Portuguese chicken. I eat it all the time. Whether you're getting pitted in some hectic barrels at the beach or working out at the gym, a porto is the perfect load up on some protein. Get that Nick Brabot body you've always wanted. Whether you're into burgers, wraps or nuggets, a porto has you covered. And if you mention Big Boy Brabot at any participating a porto restaurant, you'll receive a free upsize. A porto flame grilled chicken. Try some today. Well, there it is, number one. <laughs> yeah, absolute great. Oh, mate, if that come out tomorrow on the Triple J podcast <laughs> or whatever they're doing, and it was like, here's number one, and they didn't play Tones and I, they played that, yeah. I would stand and applaud. I would be dancing in the streets. So there you go. That's the Brabotist 100, number one. The best thing about that is, like, Nick is a very serious guy. Yeah. He obviously has an empire behind him. Mm. He's got his Instagram page with millions of followers. <laughs> He's got his endorsement deals. A porter. He was a judge. Chocolate. He was a judge at Wompoff. He was so serious behind that judge's mm. panel. I loved it. And then we handed him this piece of paper and he said, yeah, no wackers. Did it. Just did it perfectly. He read it live. And it was so funny. And I don't think people understand how good that is no i think they do like i tried to read at the start (laughs) of this podcast and i couldn't do it 
And, you know, that's what a private school education will get you. <laughs> and you wrote that yourself. <laughs> he was reading your writing. He did so well and it's so funny and it deserves the number one spot of the Brabotist. What are we calling? The Nick Brabotist 100? The, well, the Bottist 100 and then the Nick Brabotist, Brabotist 100. 100. Well done, Nick. Thank you very much for everyone that's been involved in the podcast last year. We're going to... Return to normal programming very, very soon. Very, very soon. But for now, it's over. (laughs) Shit, the baddest. It's been really long. Uh, I haven't said it for so long and I've forgotten my line. But I will say, it's always overhead when you're body surfing. Bye.